And there is a lot of it. Good afternoon from the Superbook.com Sports Desk. I'm Joe Hunk. As of right now, four Tennessee Titans have been cut from the team. Left tackle Taylor Lewan, wide receiver Robert Woods, kicker Randy Bullock, and linebacker Zach Cunningham were all informed today that they will not be back for next season. Entering the day, the Titans were $25 million over the cap limit. After these four moves, they have cleared over $37.7 million and are looking at between $11 and $12 million of availability to sign and do with whatever they want. Vanderbilt tonight going for win number six in the SEC. If they do so and they beat LSU, this will be the first time that, L- that Vanderbilt has won six consecutive SEC games since 2008. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, you need to visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Vols, the flagship station for your Tennessee Titans and home to 3HL. This is 104.5 The Zone. The Rachel 104.5 The Zone. Brent Doherty with you on a Wednesday afternoon in the Music City. There's Don Davenport. She's fired up. Hi. That's 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 Bonk. That's Bonk. Twitch, please. Twitch, please. Twitch, please. Happy Wednesday to you. What up, Double D? What up, people? Hey, just a nice little PSA. If you're not passing somebody, get the hell out of the left lane on the interstate. <laughs> Carry on. I mean, literally, it, like, Hunk started his uh, sports report, and we're like, where's Babs? And, like, we know not to ever say that because you're right. going to end up, like, flying in here. And you flew yeah. in here, and, he, and mm-hmm. you were like, these people in the fast lane. I'm not those what. words. Hey, <laughs> yeah. It is not radio safe, what I said. Don, did you get uh, <laughs> released on Titans today? Uh, you know, <laughs> yes. Good. All right. Uh, maybe this guy did. Ron Slay. I'm in the building. I'm in the building. Back from Fayetteville, Arkansas. And from Nashville, Tennessee, at six foot Straight eight, in. at power forward. Straight Ron in. Ron Slay. I mean, straight here. Straight here. Y'all better bro. buckle up, cause this car ain't got no roof. From Woo! the airport. From the boat. When he had so me. So you alone. slept in this morning? No. You uh, flew early. Man, when I got to the airport, I got up at five forty. What? What is going that. on? Man, it, getting out of Fayetteville, there's no direct flights. Why? So I had to fly all the way to Charlotte. Why 540? Why not 535 or 530 or 545? Because hey. boarding was at 640. And that extra five minutes is like life Yeah, I, Yeah, I'm starting well, to figure that out. So Coming off a late game oh, and, and waking up and going to the airport. Yeah, yeah. that five minutes is. It was much needed. Uh, it was much needed. But it, it was like 30-minute drive to the. Um, oh man, what? thirty minute drive to the airport. Man, what about I go downstairs and you know I scheduled an Uber to get me, so they're out there early, so they get there at five. They would pick me up at five fifty. Actually, I woke up at five forty, but I go downstairs um, because it says he's here, and I go down there, and guess what he's doing? <laughs> Can you blame him? Oh uh, yes, this is your job. Why'd you accept this ride? And the doors are locked, so I'm sitting there knocking on the window. Oh, he didn't wake and up. And he wake up. I had to call the Uber, and then make his phone ring. And he woke up. He's like, "Oh, my bad, bro. I was just catching a little, uh, <laughs> catching a little nod real quick." I said, "Hey, man, you sure you want to take this ride? Because you gotta go through the back sticks to get to the airport." I have no idea about favorite. Hey, man. Well, I'm telling you, it's all back road to get to the airport. And I'm yeah. like, dude, we it's kind of scary. I want to go in here and go to sleep. I can't even go to sleep now in the car. I got to stay up to watch what? you. Who sleeps in an Uber anyway? Dude. I can't sleep in it. You got to keep you got to keep your head on a swivel. No, nah, I'm, I'm going to You can't I'm be falling asleep, asleep man, in an Uber. Sleep. Who sleeps sleep. in an Uber? Me. I'm going to sleep on the way to the airport. <laughs> Only time I've ever slept in is in an Uber is because I had one too many at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Did you fall asleep in the Uber in Kansas City where you went across the street? <laughs> That's, that is Oh, up. in that 30-second Uber ride? That was no. amazing. <laughs> Couldn't find the hotel. I am, standing outside. Uh, calls an Uber. 
<laughs> we we then recognize the hotel is literally catty corner across the street. No. She still gets an Uber and, get, and takes the ride over there. I promise I would have sprinted <laughs> over there to be there to open the door for her. <laughs> hey, welcome, welcome I'm home. I'm just glad she was safe. Like, <laughs> hey, can we point across out that you didn't figure it out either? No. Nah. Nobody knew. Eventually, I was the one that saw it, though. <laughs> yes. I still was like, whatever, I'm getting in this Uber. <laughs> it was um, cold. So, yeah, Fayetteville. <laughs> yeah. I was good time, though. So, college yeah. time. One time we had Tony Allen on 3HL. Remember the grind? Tony Allen, the basketball The player? grind father for, uh, for the Memphis Grizzlies. Mm-hmm. And we go to him, and he's snoring. He was asleep. Really? John McClain fell asleep on this radio yeah. airwaves before. Well, but Blaine started yelling at him. Tony, wake up! How did he fall asleep? But by, by he said, me "Man, I had to catch a nap." I so, I, listen, I we like. we called. We had to call back because he wouldn't wake up, and Blaine was just screaming at him. And so we called back, and his mama answered the phone. Oh, uh, hold on, let me get Tony. Yep, and she had to wow, wake the hey, grandfather, dude. that dude, man, he was unreal. Bless his heart. Uh, by the way, uh, you can watch the show live YouTube, Facebook Live, Twitter, and Twitch. Twitch, please. We've got Coach Mack presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans coming up at 320 to talk about all these Titans moves. So the Titans started the day at around $25 million over the cap after today's moves. Before one, they've added one since this tweet came out from Adam Schefter. But uh, since the first three moves, they were $4.23 million under the cap, according to Schefter. So offensive tackle Taylor Lewan, wide receiver Robert Woods, kicker Randy Bullock. I told y'all about Randy Bullock when we started going through these contracts. I know. I didn't realize uh, how much he was scheduled to make. I know. I got to find my list. When I started to uh, calculate all the dead money and all that Mm -hmm. stuff, it's in here somewhere. But, um, yeah, Bud Dupree, I guess, is is the one that's still out there that we kind of targeted. But, you know, it's – it's unfortunate. We all knew that Taylor Lewan was was going to be gone, and and he did too. Um, mm-hmm. But man, uh, and and it's funny because a lot of people love Taylor. A lot of people dislike Taylor. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of a divisive guy for an offensive tackle. That's kind of rare, I think, uh, in in football. But um, in terms of us, very thankful for all of the time that he has willingly given us. Um, shows up at uh, at Toy Field. Uh, and brings toys to kids without even you know telling us he's going to do it and things like that and 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 so really really good dude and he will be missed in this market. Yeah, he still could be here, right? Yeah, busting with the boys ain't going nowhere. Yeah, he's still around. So you're saying he'll just quit football? I, yes, or he's going to become a tight end based on the way he looks now. Well, he, I was going to yeah, say he he's lost great. a ton of weight. It looks yeah. really good. Yeah, I'm with it. I mean, he I knew like it was now. coming. It, it's it in was a, it's a product of that contract. Mm-hmm. There's nothing you can do. Like he's he's been he's coming been, off of yeah. injuries, older. Like, and and listen, love or hate him, the Titans are going to miss him and his leadership on that offensive line. Yeah, even if it's not his play, especially if Ben Jones is is going to be gone. You are right. Yeah, and in terms of Ben Jones, he may retire. Um, and that's, that he should retire. I don't think that's any, what I'm saying. He needs th- yeah. to retire. I don't think anybody would blame him, right? Yeah. No. no, I mean no. he's had a phenomenal yeah. career. As as Bully said, Keith Bullock said, like you start having concussions that late in life, yeah. that's not a good thing. Yeah. Yep. So uh, Zach Cunningham has been released since then. Yeah, he, the, he, he was on our list too. He all of these were the only one missing as of right now Who's is Bud Dupree. Bud Dupree. Oh, okay. So everybody was, that's been cut. Mm-hmm. Well, here Taylor was, Lewan. Here, here was Go my ahead. list. Uh, Taylor Lewan saves him fourteen point eight four one million. Robert Woods mm-hmm. saves him twelve point oh two million. Randy Bullock saves him two point one three million. If I added all this right, um, I did not have Zach Cunningham on my list initially. I did. Although I did write him down down here. Um, yep. You did. Uh, Bud Dupree saves him nine point three five. Yep. They cut him. That's the that was the other one on my list. So it was Lawan Woods, Zach Cunningham, um, Bullock. After Mayor was like, "Look at his numbers." Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, nobody and, thought to look at him. I know. Well, people were and people are talking about. Well, what are they going to do at the kicker position? I think they have a practice squad guy that they like, right? Yep. Yes, they do. The kicker from Iowa. Yes, the Iowa kid. I think they like him. Isn't so. that the one that? That ain't the Green Bay one. 
Wasn't it a Lambo? No, one? no, no, no. That was yeah. No, it's not Lambo. That's okay. not the the one that. that okay. I forgot yeah, about I didn't that want guy. Remember, he Shoot went down trick. Right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, really good kicker. Mainly thought that he was actually going to beat Bullock out in training camp. Yeah. Then he got injured. Okay. Well, so here's... I hope he's healthy. But Dupree, all that to say, Dupree's the only one on my list that hasn't happened. Sandman yet. Scape said, "Mickey said all this puts him eleven point two under." Yep. So there you go. Uh, th- there are. At least two other contracts that need to be reworked. Ryan Tannehill. I mean, they could cut him and say seventeen point eight. They're not going to do it. But oh boy, um, that, ooh, it's about. Ooh. But he is sixteen percent of their cap number, which you know that that's going to have to be reworked. And then Derrick Henry's okay, but- going into the last year of his deal. They actually saved seven point three six seven by cutting him. They're not going to do that either. But they, I would guess, I would guess that they'll rework both of those deals. Or oh. trade Derrick Henry. Oh. I think this offseason. I mean, that's an option. I mm-hmm. think this offseason, especially with a new general manager, I think anything is on the table. Yeah. They they'd be they wouldn't be doing their job if they just immediately discounted something. I would put everything on the whiteboard. I'd get Slay over there, get his whiteboard, <laughs> and start putting everything over there. <laughs> yeah, start adding up the money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they were twenty one million over the cap at first to start today. 25. 25? 25. Schefter said close to 25. Good. I think it was 24 and change is the number that, like, Rhett Bryan and everybody was throwing out there. Mm -hmm. So if they they get rid of – it sounds so bad to say it like that. No, that's right. It's a hard business. But Dupree is gone. Yes. That, you said business. that's 9.1, right, million? 9.35. 9. 9.35. 3, 5. 9. 3, so that puts 3, them at 5. 20. 20 under. under. That, yep. That's balling. Then you can go mm-hmm. out and get a wide receiver or something. You can go get or some, two some offensive players. linemen. Some players. Or four. Some, some players. <laughs> four and five apiece. Let's go. <laughs> hey, gives you money to resign daily. Yeah. I only have a certain amount of mac and cheese at the get Thanksgiving out of here dinner. With that, huh? We're going to divide this equally yeah, amongst yeah. all y'all. Here you go. I got twenty million spent on offensive linemen. Here's so five of these. Who wants it? <laughs> Daly might not even want it. Daly might want a new start. He's probably telling them, "Hey man, let me go." He needs a fresh start. He does. It's, it's not him. No, fresh start's here. better than a false start <laughs> or a whiff. Well, yeah, they would have to resign be. him. He's his contract's up. Oh. Daily? Oh, no. Look, we ain't. <laughs> that was Hunk brought that up. All right. Uh, no. Having fun Mayor's with that. just messing. He's like, let me poke the bears <laughs> yeah, real quick. Yeah, they, yeah, the, Get the, out of here. The ba- well, the bears on this one are tickled. It's <laughs> 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 like Winnie the Pooh. Oh, I thought yeah. you were talking about the cocaine bear. That's the oh, Pillsbury no, that bear dough you. bear. Oh, it is. <laughs> That's not Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> My gosh. Both of them got a little shirt. One got a blue one, one got a real one. I think Pillsbury Doughboy offended somebody, so I think he's gone. I think so. I think he may have only had a bandana on too around his neck. No, that was a shirt. It was just way too small. That's what I thought. Is it? Didn't? Wasn't that offensive to somebody? Isn't he gone? Because he didn't have just a shirt on. I don't know. I, I can't keep up with why people are offended all the time. Had I can't. Rolls. I got rolls. I got rolls too. So, man, oh, my you bear. offended by that? <laughs> <laughs> Only if you wear nothing but a shirt. <laughs> a little shirt. A teeny tiny shirt. <laughs> that guy a in a little, little coat. I do think that's that we all we need to have like a three HL trip to go see the cocaine bear. <laughs> oh, hey. That I mean, movie? We gotta go to the four. I saw one. the the uh, preview of it. We got to go to the 4D one. What? That's a whole, Cocaine it's a whole different Bear experience. Cocaine Bear in 4D? I will oh, say, God. I will say this. <laughs> I'm really happy that over the course of my kid days, high school days, college days, and and when Boys in the Hood came out, that I escaped the nickname Doughboy. Oh, you ain't like it? What would you? <laughs> you think <laughs> Randy Bullock no, would, uh, no, would like cool. Doughboy? In video. Oh I'm in there more Randy Bullock. Who? Was it when it Buck that called him Fat Randy? Yes. That yep. pissed me off. I'm like, you can't it, do that. I think Randy didn't like it either. <laughs> oh, Randy actually, didn't like it. It was he Barstool like it. that started it. Oh, and then okay. Buck said it. Because Buck's the one that asked him what he thought about the nickname. And he said he wasn't a fan. Okay. Well, like anybody would be a fan of that. <laughs> hey, are you okay with people calling you fat? You good with that? Great. <laughs> so what kind of question be- is that? What about What's the difference between big? He called me Big Slay. Well, you're tall. Yeah. I think big for you, though, is more like <laughs> you're tall, big personality, all those things. Like, you're just, mm. you're just, 
large in life. I, would, I, I bet the Doughboy probably wish he, they would have told him in another term like that, too. I mean, this feeling. They just got rid of him. Ice Cube was fine with it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Get a little Chris up on the porch. <laughs> he could have shot everybody's ass over that. He didn't. <laughs> no, he did all right, not. Uh, Coach Mack, next. We'll talk about all these moves <laughs> and what they mean uh, for the Titans. 3HL 1045 The Zone. What's happening, people? Ron Slay here, man. And you spend valuable time thinking about which bets to place each week. Well, you should just be tuned in to me because you know what you would have did yesterday? Hit the paw, Slay. I hit it. You are exactly right. Yep. And maybe if you tune in to 3HL, you could hear a little bit more. So why wouldn't you want the best company in the business to be? One who handles those bets. That's Superbook Sports, the most trusted name in Vegas. And it's live right here in Tennessee for all your sports wagering needs. Superbook has a team of dedicated odds makers behind the counter in Las Vegas setting all the prices. I've seen them. I've been behind the scenes, and I've seen them. It's like 12 of them, and each of them got three computers. So that's a lot going on back there. And they're going to get it right. And right now, you can look ahead to a lot of hoops that's going on, tournaments about to start. All you got to do is download Superbook Sports app and visit Superbook.com to wager and win today. Visit Superbook.com for terms and conditions. Gambling problem call 1-800-889-9789. Book it. All right, guys. Mortgage rates are lower than they have been in about half a year. So maybe you need to call Loan Pronto and, you know, do that refinance thing you've been putting off. Time to get back to house hunting, maybe, or... Maybe you just have way too much credit card debt right now. And uh, that 20 plus percent interest charge that you pay every month just makes you want to rip your hair out. Loan Pronto can help you with that. You can get a quick, easy refi at Loan Pronto. Uh, maybe get cash out, get cash out to do a home improvement project or wipe out that credit card debt. You can close in about 14 days. You can cut your overall expenses by 500 bucks a month or more. And get yourself a refi. Loan Pronto is doing them right now with APRs in the fours. Call now. Take advantage of that rate drop at 615-499-5780. LoanPronto.com. I refinanced my house with Loan Pronto. I went to LoanPronto.com and started the entire process online. So it was simple. It was easy. And that's super important to me. If it is to you, call Loan Pronto, 615-499-5780. Let them help you out. Equal housing lender, NMLS 1661781, subject to lender approval.
Three Tell 104.5, the zone. Brent Doherty, Don Davenport, Ron Slay, producer Joe Hunk, and <laughs> Coach Mack on a very busy day in the Music City with regard to the local NFL team, the Tennessee Titans, making some moves. Again, uh, Taylor Lewan, Robert Woods, Randy Bullock, and now um, Zach Cunningham all let go. We're waiting to see on Bud Dupree, see what they do with um, Ryan Tannehill's contract, maybe Derrick Henry's contract, and uh, they've cleared some money today. Up around twenty million under now, um, mm-hmm. so we'll see how that all works itself out. Uh, Coach Mack, presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans, joins us now. Coach, what's up? How are you? Well, uh, my phone's been blowing up. You guys are, are are on top of this. I'm still I'm watching offensive tackles on tape, getting ready for this combine. Yeah, uh, you're the you're the number. You've always been a good numbers guy. You know, ever since I've been doing these shows, well, give me the numbers. Give me the numbers now, Brent, of the rundown of what they've saved with with this. Because, look, we all knew this was coming. It's just the inevitability and the stark reality of the salary cap. So uh, give me the numbers. Yeah, I haven't been able to run it down real well today. Just been doing a bunch of stuff. But Don said uh, they cleared $42 million in cash. Um, Mickey has them at 11.2 under uh, the cap. I've seen others that say 14. So, like, I think everybody's still trying to flush out the dollars. But – uh, Bud Dupree's still hanging out there, and they would save nine point three five million by cutting him. and And this is the reality of the situation. You talk about it all the time. This is, it's a business. It, it's a business, and you can't you know in in that coaching world, scouting world, player world, you can't really get emotional about it. No, you really can't. You, you cannot, and it's and it's hard not to. I mean, I was you know involved in it. I made I made a lot of these cuts when I had the you know when I had the hammer, and was that that was my you know charge to do that when i was in uh a head coach especially when i first took that thing over in arizona they were in terrible terrible cap cap problems and so yeah i mean it, you still it, it's still a you, you talk about it and you hate you don't want to be flippant with it because it's still human beings it's, yep. you know it's not only their lives it's their family's lives and it mo- all of these guys it's what they that's all they've been doing you know and, and it's and it's basically you know who they are for a long time not that the rest of their life, you know, isn't very, very important, but this was a huge, huge part of it. So you don't want to be flipping about it, but the reality of it is, I think, you know, our listeners, everybody's dealt with credit cards in their life, you know, uh, and, and sooner or later, sooner or later, they will let you extend it for a while, but you're going to have to pay it off. And that's, that, that's what's come due here. So you're, you're telling me where the, the Titans right now are anywhere between 11 and the 14 million now over that they cleared it. Now, uh, and again, you talk about Bud Dupree. Uh, he's got a he's got a big number too. Yeah, I think I'm sure they're talking if 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 something's going to happen there, whether that's a pre June first or a post June first cut, which does have some you know some financial implications. Glad but, you brought that up. You know, yeah. I, yes, they're they're not they're not done yet. I, I, I'm I'm pretty sure that they're not done yet. But we all knew that this was coming. But I think that uh, and I know you guys you know because you're all professionals handle it the right way. But it's you know, I really, I always have had a distaste for just saying, well, you know, all right, well, they got rid of this guy or they yeah. got rid of that guy. Well, that's not, that's not really the way it really is yep. in real life. Yeah, John Glennon uh, posted two other big names that would provide significant cap room for the Titans if cut would be Dupree and Tannehill. May or may not happen, but if the Titans were to go that direction, they'd benefit even more financially by making them post-June 1st cuts. Teams are allowed two per year. Yeah, well, again, as I say, that that that's the more a lot. The, the cap is fascinating when you really dig into it. I mean, it's it it it's nice to have you know it's nice to have a surface level view of it, and a lot of people like to dig deeper into it. But unless you're really with the with the franchise and you're in the league office, you really don't know how much exact money people have. I mean, people get pretty close uh, approximations, and and there's those there's a couple of websites right that most people go to. SpotTrack.com. You know, the yeah. That's there the you one. go yep. uh, to look at, and, and and I'm sure they get pretty close. But the the, the, machi- the machinery that you have to go through with the salary cap it's 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 very detailed, it's very intricate, and it's very interesting, you know, when you're doing it. And so, but on the surface level as to what's going on, we knew these cuts were coming, and we knew these adjustments were going to have to be made. And a lot of these are made before you, they have to be made before you go to the combine, because then you're going to start talking to other people, you know, about you know possibly some of their other people when it when when tampering is legal and also I mean, you got to start looking at, and throwing your net out there 
you know, to see what there might be a chance if you've got money that you can be able to handle. And that might sway a little bit as to what direction you go, you know, not necessarily in the first round of a draft, but through the belly of the draft. Coach, can you just explain to uh, fans out there kind of the difference with releasing a player and then releasing a player because of a failed physical? Because the Titans, with two of them, uh, two of their the guys that they release in Lawan and Cunningham were failed physical releases. Yeah, it's it, 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 it's just it, it's just the, uh, the the exact designation as far as to why they release the money. The money that you get is still the same. It just depends on uh, whether or not. In their in their former contracts, there were there were injury settlement designations, but uh, it's it, I, it's really you, you when you designate people, you know that 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 have failed physical, then that's that that puts it into another category as far as if there's any money that they can recoup because of what the contracts. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to look this up, but I think if they sign with another team, then maybe. Like a, a little bit, and, and I think it's negligible, really, how much money goes back on that it, number. It, it, but, it is. Yeah. I mean, and it, look, when we talk about negligible in the National Football League money, I mean. It's a million? You, something yeah. like that. I mean, <laughs> no, I think it's something yeah. like that, yeah. Yeah, you're talking in the real world, it's a lot of money. Right. But <laughs> in the world of professional sports, well, then, it, you know, it becomes, you know, when you start talking about the overall scope of it. But uh, that is correct. Coach. Hey. Go ahead, bud. Sorry, I'm talking. I'm totally changing <laughs> gears. Well, because you just said something that that sparked me. Okay, you're sparked. Yes. You... Oh, by the way, they saved four point five million on Zach Cunningham. Oh, just there saying. you go. Okay. Oh, the um. So, Coach <laughs> Mack, you said you know obviously like a million dollars is is kind of peanuts when you're talking about NFL salary cap and contracts and all of that. I, just curious if you listened to uh, Batesy's podcast with. Raw room with AJ Brown. I'm sure you've heard some of the the quotes that have come out of that. It was just interesting to me because he said, "Oh, I would have stayed for 22," and the Titans offered 16, but he could have gotten up to 20 with incentives. I, just curious because you look at okay, let's say you know the the Titans offer was a little low, obviously, but it, it could have been at 20 with incentives, and he said, "I would have stayed at 22." Then you put in, you know, state income tax, all that. I'm just curious if you listened to any of what AJ said and what your thoughts were on that as far as talking money and, and why he ended up not being a Titan when he wanted to be. No, I have not, I have not listened to it, and not because I don't love Batesy, because Batesy was my guy. I, You know, I, I've told you the story about I, when we signed, and we very – Jeff Fisher and I both, you know, were very, very interested in bringing Batesy in to the Rams in St. Louis from Auburn because we'd watched him play all those years. Oh, that's you know, right. He, he was the same yeah. time with um, Fisher's oh, with Trent. son. Yeah, yeah. He was playing with Trent. So we, we knew Batesy very well. And, I mean, he was, you know, you, you watch anyway. So we brought him in up there. And then, of course, Batesy's being Batesy. I mean, you know, you guys were <laughs> rounded. I mean, he, I, I Big personality. Love Big. Love no, him. no, I absolutely, I absolutely love the guy. But you've yeah. got you to understand him. And so, you know, <laughs> I, I, about, I, I about cut him because, you know, uh, in some of my duties, I was in charge of, you know, uh, rookie orientation, and uh, we were getting ready to restrike the parking lot. And I said, "Look, everybody, move your cars. You got a car up here, move it, because they're going to restrike this parking lot. So you guys, this one, the rookies were there by themselves. I said, just get it moved, get it moved. I got to restrike it. One car in the parking lot. Whose was it? <laughs> when they're there, to, when they're there to repave and restripe it. You know, so so I go in and I ask our, you know, I ask our offensive quality control, who was also a, a former quarterback at Auburn. I said, "Who's this base?" And oh, I my dog Batesy. So I said, "Go go call your dog Batesy right now and tell him get over here. I'm getting ready to tell. I'm gonna call Fisher. We're gonna cut him, and I'm gonna get this car towed. So I'll give him the number where the tow lot is." <laughs> so, so Batesy comes over there, and I said, "Were you in the meeting? Yes, sir. Were you listening?" Dead silence. I said, at least you're no. honest. Said, hey, Batesy, when I talk, you better damn well listen. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm going to tow that car, and I'm going to call fishing. We're going to cut you. Coach, please, oh, God, please, no. We weren't going to cut him. Oh, God, please, no. I said, well, then go move that car, and any time I open my mouth from now on when you're here, I want you to memorize every word. You understand that? Yes, sir, Coach. I'll do it. I'll do it. I will do it. So – when we got when we and of course I loved him. That's I mean, mm-hmm. oh, when I when I when when 
Oh, the first day the pads came on, we had a special teams drill where it was kind of trying to find out who's who in the zoo. Batesy destroyed everybody, you know. Yeah. And, so, and so, hey, but no, no, here's Batesy too. He said, "Hey, Mag Daddy, you glad you didn't cut me for that car, you know, after that practice was over with." <laughs> And then, then the first, then the the first thing when we signed him here, I know I'm getting off on a tangent now, but Basie, oh, you brought great. up Basie to me. When the first thing when we signed him here as a free agent, he was in the uh, dining hall. He came up, and gave me a big hug. I said, Basie, do you know where to park? Oh hell yeah, coach! Amen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's have relationships. Have I listened to it? No, I have not listened to that. And 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 as I and as I say, look, AJ Brown is a premier player in the league, mm-hmm. and. You know, you just when that happened, I think it was a you know it was a it was a shock to everybody. It clearly, uh, you know, I, I really felt like, and again, just you know, being at practice and watching him interact with the players, I think I think he enjoyed being here. I think he and Mike Vrabel were you know were close, but you know, sometimes money's money, and sometimes what happens too when you're in those kind of negotiations like that. I've been involved with it. You know, and sometimes it, 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 what has to happen in a negotiation is both sides have to be willing to work towards the middle. And if and the worst thing that happens is if it, it, is if you quit talking. Mm-hmm. And if you quit talking, then you know, I mean, there's a. I've been involved in a lot of these where you know where where pride gets into it a whole lot, a whole lot. And I, believe me, I, I understand it. And that's one thing I I never did. I never wanted to begrudge any player their money. All right, and also their reason for wanting a, a certain amount of money. So, have I listened to it? No. Do I? Do, am I glad Basie has a podcast? I think he's probably one of the most, the best podcast person I could ever think of. <laughs> Basie and Slade. This is a lot of cussing. Slade needs to go on that podcast. Boy, that'd be some entertainment. Well, you know, I've been well, on that. Me, oh, that yeah. Oh, yeah. That you said Basie would have some language on his podcast. <laughs> I know. Surprising, <laughs> isn't it? Um, <laughs> coach Mag with us presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. <laughs> coach, uh, I, I know every head coach is different, but um, I, I'm curious how many people get involved in these numbers and, okay. and understanding the dead cap space and like which players mm-hmm. might be on the block and might have some input on, on what to do. Um, I, I'm just curious about that through your years in the league. But they, 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 there's two things that especially since the – see, when I first came into the league, guys, there was no free agency and there was no salary cap. Yeah. Okay? Mm-hmm. So you didn't have to. But once it came into – and then, you know, some people for the first two or three years of the salary cap did not know how to manage it. That's why you saw so many teams in, in cap problems. But, you know, as it worked on, then it, it, it became an necessity. Now, that's why you hire all of these cap people, but you have to have an idea. You know, as a, as a head coach, you have to have an idea – and and the one thing, the one thing when I was, you know, interviewing for, for, for my head jobs and I would talk to other other head coaches just to get some advice, they said two things you need to know. Have a have have some working knowledge of the cap because it, it, it figures into the construction of your roster and then know that rule book back and forwards. And so those are two things. I'll tell you, I've got the dead cap list pulled up, and SpotTrack.com is the website you alluded to. That is phenomenal. Okay. But uh, I'll tell you right now, the safest member of that roster, Harold Landry. Mm. His dead cap number, if they were to release him, $30.2 million, Woo-hoo! way over wow. anybody else. Good. He can get healthy yeah. and make a difference on that defense, right? Well, that's exactly right, Don. And he just he just had his new deal, you know, which to me yeah. was, I mean – is one of the it, it you know it was a it was a really a, really a sad thing because I think he was getting ready to really have a good mm-hmm. night with that, with that whole and you know we're going back to yes and buts but when that whole group was you know was healthy through training camp it was it was pretty fun to watch but uh, yeah I would say he's fairly safe. No, <laughs> oh, you. you yeah. And honestly, that contract's not bad for the Titans. I mean, no, he he got no. his money, but he's he only counts eight percent against their cap, whereas Ryan Tannehill is sixteen point one five. Yeah, but look at most look at most veteran quarterbacks in the league. Where, where's their percentage? Right. So Patrick Mahomes is seventeen percent. Right. Yeah. So I mean, most and most worth veteran all of it. Quarterbacks. I mean, most veteran quarterbacks. That's just that's that's the price of doing business in this league. Is it, you know, it really is. And as, as we're starting to see, and this thing, this thing is like an amoeba. I'm talking about, you know, the percentage of caps. It, it, it moves, you know, now, now it's moved towards, you know, your receivers are going to be a huge part of it. You know, I mean, there, there's, uh, 
it's an it's an ever evolving thing. But to me, you know, fifteen or sixteen percent that's about for a veteran quarterback. That's about where you're going to be. Yeah, and it, it really feels like we're moving toward a system in the NFL where if you can get production out of a rookie quarterback under a rookie contract, that's where you can really fill out the roster. Mm-hmm. Well, that's always been that's always been the case, especially now. You know, it, it made a little bit of a switch early on, uh, Brent. Now, and you're talking about a quarterback that can really be the dude, you yeah. know, after his second year. Yeah. Okay. And, and and see, this made a switch. Sam Bradford was the last quarterback that got seventy five million dollars before he ever took a snap. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, you know, what a waste. So, yeah. Well, exactly. Were and, you guys there came, at that point? Yeah. We came, oh. we came after he he had gotten it. I mean, we yeah. we were we did not draft him. But we came after – and Sam Bradford, if he doesn't get injured, I mean, the, the guy was a legitimate arm and a legitimate, you know, intellect and all of that. But, you know, he had two ACL surgeries. Yeah. But that, take that away. It wasn't his fault that he got $75 million. I mean, that was, that was the going price. That's the way it was with the draft. But they changed all of that. And so now – it's not – now the, the, the quarterback if, that, you, that you draft high, if, you can, if they can start being functional, especially after that second year, the second year moving forward while you still have them on that four-year you know, rookie contract because their numbers aren't so huge anymore, all right? Now, it used to be it wasn't like that. You know, a, a, a rookie quarterback would take a lot of your money up and just before they ever took a snap. Now it's not like that. So what you are saying is true. But two things have to happen. First of all, you have to be in a position, if you're going to draft one, to be able to get up to get whichever you, you feel are the elite ones. Yeah. There's, very, there's very few of them. Yeah. You, you guys, we've all agreed there's, there's, a, there's a quarterback draft and there's everybody else draft, yep. all right? And the other thing that you have to do is to, is to be sure that when you get one and, you, and he has to start playing, some of the things that hap- have happened is that you get one of those guys, but you're drafting him to a team that's so bad because they have the rights to draft up that high that if you start him too early, you ruin him for a while, okay, you know, until you can build back up around him. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty fine balancing act. Coach Mack with us on 3HL. Um, one more, real quick, because a lot of people in our chat are, are talking about a topic that has been coming up ever so often mm-hmm. about whether or not you trade Derrick Henry. And, and my, my thing is, I know a lot of people are emotional about the player, and he's one of the best ever. Uh, but if you're in a system where you're a new general, and correct me if I'm wrong, please, but if you're a, a, a new general manager, you come in and everything is on the table, right? Well, I'm sure a lot of these things, uh, there during the interview process, Brent and Don and Ron, all these things have been talked about with anybody that they brought into interview. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Especially if you made it through to a second interview. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know what's on the table. But the the fact of the matter is, is that roster reconstruction is you know it was a very viable force that designated the change yeah. okay and so it's so important it, now is, yeah which it is yeah. so i can't tell you i i would have had no idea who see i i don't know because i'm not in those meetings and the only reason i say that and that is because i've been in those meetings and i know mm-hmm. what goes on and then what you know purportedly goes on that people report that's not true so i don't know that but roster reconstruction for this football team after what happened this season, that's clearly a point of emphasis. What a great visit, Coach, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, good day for you to come on with us. We no really question. appreciate it. Timing. And uh, always appreciate your perspective. Guys, you know how much I love talking ball with you three. I really do. See you guys. Get to All the right. film, Coach. Get back to the film, baby. <laughs> Thanks, Coach Bass. We, we want to hear from you. Titans uh, with a big day. Uh, we know a lot of people are in this YouTube feed, man, um, and that always happens when the Titans have news going on. Yep. Again, if you're just tuning in, uh, the Titans have uh, released Taylor Lewan, Robert Woods, Randy Bullock, and now Zach Cunningham. Will there be more moves? 615-737-1045. And what would you do? Would you entertain a trade with Derrick Henry? 615-737-1045. Maryland Farms Wine and Spirits. Go see my friend Jason. And uh, I know a lot of you guys like uh, like to get in and out of the uh, of the liquor store. And I understand uh, Maryland Farms Wine and Spirits. 
uh, certainly can be that place for you. But uh, may, maybe maybe you should open yourself up to other choices in the wine world or other choices in the bourbon world, for example. And and uh, these guys are so knowledgeable, and the selection is amazing with wine, with with bourbon, with tequila, with craft beer with cigars they've got it all for you uh 101 creekside crossing in brentwood by the Publix. they're open monday through saturday 9 a.m to 9 p.m closed on sundays delivery through the maryland farms wine and spirits app as well they have curbside pickup too maryland farms wine and spirits locally owned and has served the middle tennessee area for more than 17 years if you're looking for a perfect gift for a housewarming birthday or uh, just say thank you maryland farms wine and spirits has customized baskets for you to grab and go with wines, spirits, local olives, chocolates. Perfect gift for that cocktail lover. Every Wednesday, which is today, is Senior Day, so go in for special discounts. Also, every day they honor their military discount. Case discounts every day, too. MarylandFarmsWS.com. That's Maryland Farms Wine and Spirits. 101 Creekside Crossing in Brentwood by the Publix.
Welcome back into 3HL on 104.5 The Zone. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening to the sound of our voices, then you need to listen to this right here because you ain't got no choice. You can't see it unless you're on Zone TV, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or Twitch. <laughs> I like how you're sticking to the script. <laughs> yeah, you're nailing this. I just took a big bite of it, like a chicken Caesar salad. I'm like, it's like, oh. So what I'm telling you. You've got a shake is... weight over there if you're watching YouTube. This is really uncomfortable. Wait, is that part of Awaken 180? Yeah. <laughs> Calling all Nashville <laughs> SC fans. Listen to Ramon, Kayla, and Will. That's in the morning, if you're new to the shows, um, <laughs> to find out how you can win Nashville Soccer Club tickets to the home opening Man in Black match. Now, I don't understand why it would be Man in Black. So the Man in Black is their new uniform that jerseys. pays homage to Johnny Cash. It's not They're just sweet. one man, though. Yeah, Johnny it, Cash was one man. He was one man. Man in black. But Johnny Cash is the there. man in black. <laughs> it's a lot of men out there on the field. Yeah. I know, but it's the Johnny Cash yeah. man in black Just jersey. Just finish the liner, yeah. Slay. <laughs> Why you got a question? <laughs> They're all united behind Johnny Cash. In black. Yeah. Okay, all right. The man in black. We'll debate this later. Match this Saturday, plus two man in black. Here we go again. Plus two, which is more than one, man in black jerseys. For more info. So would that be men in black jerseys? Exactly. Because it's going to be two of them. You get two jerseys. But for more info to purchase tickets, you can visit NashvilleSC.com slash tickets and get you a men in black for a man in black day for Johnny Cash. All right. I'll read the damn liner next time. I'm sorry, huh? Hey, that's what you get for throwing on Slay. <laughs> that, took, dog. that took the entire segment. Now, guess what, though? They ain't just going to give me anything just to read. It almost did. They ain't gonna give me just anything. It's gonna, it's gonna make some sense. It didn't You're make not sense reading to them you, anymore. <laughs> it made no sense to you. No, it didn't. No. So you had the question. Why That's right. Because like, he didn't even read it before he read it. Well, I just <laughs> <laughs> I almost dropped the S bomb. <laughs> I did. I, did you I, hear that? Yeah, Seattle, that happened. I, Seattle, I don't either. <laughs> I got. I got to that. I do that all Seattle. the time. See? I read things before I like on air before I read them off air all the time. See. I know, and that's why, yep. And that one was a tricky one, because when I was reading it, I was trying to think, why is this not men in black? See what I'm saying? But I just kept reading it while my mind is also thinking of other things. And? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> okay. Hey, let's get that. Randy and Hermitage in here <laughs> talking that. about uh, all these Titans <laughs> cuts today. Randy, what's up? How are you? Hi, how are y'all today? Hey, we're good, man. <laughs> Here's the, here's a couple of things that I'm thinking about. Okay, oh, number one, why does the Titans always develop players on their team and give them away for nothing, and they go to other teams and are successful for years, and they manage to keep them on the team? So does Amy Adams have – I don't know how it works, but can't Amy Adams pay these players like other than on cap room to keep them? Who who else are we talking about? Well, I mean, like I mean every, AJ Brown, but who well, else? Well, every kicker they've well, released over the last like seven years has turned out to be a starting kicker in the NFL somewhere else. Yeah, uh, but so it's Bull- a kicker. So Bullock is going to watch Robert Woods. Like Robert Black Woods Black will be productive said, wherever he goes that. next year because it's going to be a year after the injury. I, well, because he's that. also not going to be a number one. Sorry, Randy. True. Who else? Uh, what about what about the other players though? Like. Uh, our offensive lineman, I know we got some still at Green Bay that still protect. Well, the and Sa- Saffold had an awesome year. Um, Quesenberry was on the starting. same line. Yeah. Both of them were on the same line. I mean, there are guys, but that happens with it. I really, thank you, Randy, for the call. I really yeah. believe that you could go through cuts from every, every team, team and find stuff like that. Yes. That's because, the thing. Look, and we there's talking, reasons mm-hmm. we were talking for about, every single one of them. Like, Saffold yeah. was injured. Yep. Now, I mean, he told us on 3HL at Buffalo Wild Wings that he was dealing during the season, he said this, that he was dealing with a nerve injury. So while everybody was getting upset about him leaving the game for a few plays a lot, it's because he couldn't feel his right arm. Mm -hmm. So if you're the Titans, are you going to pay somebody who can't feel his right arm half of the games? No, you're not. So there's reasons for all of them. Now we can have a conversation of why does he go somewhere else and he's healthy is <laughs> like, what's going on here? Yeah. Because you can say the same about AJ Brown who had knee issues. Why does he go somewhere else and he's healthy and yeah. doesn't miss a single game? I, this all goes back Remember to Ryan suck up. Uh, yep. Ryan the career up. With, with, with mm-hmm. the Buccaneers. It was fine. Se- seemed to be fine, but was injured here. So, it, it, that 
is a different conversation, probably for over the summer. But at some point, you have to look at your training staff and what's going on with your injured players if you're the Titans. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be an interesting discussion at some point down the road when maybe the bones are in the graveyard. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, you got to hurry up and get them in, though. What a great way to put it. All right. Uh, thank you, Babsy. Bones Listen. are in the graveyard. Listen. I mean, it's a little morbid, but that's well, that's about, you that's about where that's you your, are. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> who are you talking to? That's, that's you. Uh, Tennessee up one nothing on Alabama A&M. There's a uh, baseball uh, score update for you. Um, when we come back, uh, we'll talk more about this. Also, Tennessee basketball, another loss last night. 3HL, 104.5 The Zone. What's happening, good people? Let me help you realize something, because I got people texting me during the show and everything. What's up? My little sister, Ashley. Yep, she's been texting me. She's like, dude, what are you doing to get slammed like this? And Ashley, I tell you this every time in the text, so I'm going to tell you and everybody else listening. Awaken 180. That's what I'm doing. Yep, even being on the go. I'm talking about plenty of flights, plenty of different hotels, plenty of different food options, and I somehow am able to stick to my plan. And how do I do that? Because you get a personalized coach, and mine is Coach Sam, and she helps me. We meet every Wednesday, and we go through what my week will look like. Am I going to have any problems going forward? Um, Am I going to have problems finding places to eat, things to eat? And they're going to send me my stuff, and I'm going to pack it, and I'm going to roll with it, and it's going to be that easy. The weight loss industry hasn't seen anything like this. You're looking for a solution, not a quick fix. Do what I did and make the call to Awaken 180 Weight Loss. Weekly weight loss and then receive free support for life. Call 844-346-1800. That's 844-346-1800 online at awaken180weightloss.com. You better believe I'm slim.
And the very latest is that the Titans have made some cuts. Good afternoon from the Superbook.com Sports Desk. I'm Joe Hunk. Four cuts to be exact. Taylor Lewan, Robert Woods, Randy Bullock, and Zach Cunningham are no longer with the Titans. Before the day started, the team started at $25 million over the cap. With all of these moves have taken place, all four of them, they have freed up over $37.7 million and have a little over $11 million now in cap space to play with and do with whatever they so choose. You have college baseball happening right now. Tennessee hosting Alabama A&M. They are up one to nothing on SEC Network Plus. And UAB and Vanderbilt are going to be going getting going here in about 30 minutes over at Hawkins for all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs. You need to visit USS stn.com breaking news at once on your home for the falls the flagship station for your tennessee titans and home to 3hl this is 104.5 the zone Three HL one zero four five the zone. Pretty Doherty with you on a Wednesday afternoon in the Music City. Hope you're having a great day. I've got Don Davenport right here. That, that's that's Buck. That's Buck. Twitch please. Twitch please. Twitch please. Happy Wednesday, hum day. What up, day? What up, double D? What up? Also got Ron Slade. Back from Fayetteville, Arkansas. Yeah, I'm in the building. Best believe I'm in the building. Better be ready. I'm in the Hang on the roof. It's time for the show. Dude, you are grinding, man. I don't know how you're sitting in here awake. Um, because my Uber driver was asleep. Slay, I need to compliment you. On what now, huh? In, no, in the course of two months, <laughs> you went from doing Saturdays on SEC Network to doing color analyst work for college basketball games to work in a slam dunk contest last night. So great job. Because that's exactly dude. what that's the Arkansas Georgia game was. Wow, that's what I just told them. Like, dude, they, hey, man, that was a highlight reel, man. Good God almighty, them boys can fly. Mm-hmm. My favorite man. was the shot of you that they showed after one of the dunks about how you looked at it. Yeah, yeah. Because it amazed you so much. <laughs> dude, that was like, why Why would you do that? Like, Ricky Council, the fourth. You know what his brother's name are? Ricky Council, Ricky Council, Ricky Council. Say that fast three times. Ricky Council, Ricky Council, Ricky Council. <laughs> yeah. I think one of them was a rookie when I was yeah. saying those three names. Um, well, can dunk, wow, man. he's so yeah. athletic. These guys are different athletes. They now, all man. do. They I all. mean, it's crazy. And I'll say this, and the Babsy said this a lot before too. When you're watching the game on TV compared to when you're at the game, you see the size difference. Mm-hmm. It is like, like when people say guys are six eight or they six nine, like you see the difference, and it makes it. Like, I, I will say, these guys are not built like they were in my era as far as muscle, muscular, but, man, they put together and the length. Woo, these young men, yeah. What's your next game? Do you know? Uh, a little bit of a snoozer. Um, South Carolina at Mississippi State. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> yep. Oh, Starkville. Yep. I love me some Stark Vegas. You do. I'm not I a fan. I do. Oh, I love it there. But I saw Tennessee turn the ball over five times down there and lose uh, in 1994. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> but they I do got a big, big guy that I like to watch. I got to help you with some travel there. Uh, so I, I made something up last night, but I waited to press confirm. So I'll talk to you. There you go. Mm-hmm. There All is right. a direct. From here? To Tupelo. And then drive? Mm-hmm. I need to counsel this. Mm-hmm. Ricky, counsel this. <laughs> yeah, immediately. We'll talk. So. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> coming up at it's four. It's a real small plane, Slay. Oh, I might not need to do that. <laughs> Don't you know you had me thinking the whole time about dying on the way to Fayetteville? <laughs> No, seriously, because it no, was so much turbulence. I was like, I'm like, I'm telling you, man. Dude, Arkansas, telling I just you. had a whole conversation about this, man. Why mm-hmm. did Arkansas is like the Bermuda Triangle for some reason? Dude. Mm-hmm. I was kind of worried about it. I'm like, God, I really hope nothing happens because yeah. we talked about it. That would be like really freaky. Yeah, y'all yeah, would have did it. What was that lady's name that went down that could ever find her? Amelia Earhart. That's her. Amelia. Maybe she's in Arkansas. <laughs> it's like the Bermuda Triangle. That's what I was <laughs> Oh. <laughs> 
I'm here. I'm here on a Wednesday. Right here right now. Uh, this is where we are in the chat, Roger. Trade Henry now. Restructure Ryan right. Tannehill. Pay Big Jeff. There we go. That's a whole lot in like three, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight words. I don't <laughs> hate that. You can watch the show live on YouTube, Facebook Live, Twitter, and Twitch. Twitch, please. And you can comment accordingly. <laughs> uh, what four- all are you going to get for Henry, though? Uh, that's why. That's Honestly, why I think probably, need- probably like a third, fourth. So I think you don't even trade him now. No. He missed the window. Window was last year, and he got hurt. So. I brought it up last offseason. You did. And yeah, everybody did. everybody almost put you on the cross. I said, no, don't you do that to you I mean, give him an even, like, partially decent line, and I think he'll show people that he hasn't lost a step. No, and, that, and that's what I'm saying. You ride out his last two years. I think he's mm-hmm. got his another career. Year. I think he's got another year in him. I think he's, he's, got, got, one, he's got one year left on no. his deal. Oh, yeah. So then, ooh, that's why I got to do something with this contract. <laughs> uh, that's why you got to decide. Some on people him. are like, "Back up, off the king, ooh, stop it." <laughs> I need to leave him alone. Okay, all y'all right. stop. All right, y'all. All right, all K- right. Kay Oldham on uh, YouTube: Worst turbulence I ever uh, felt. Forty mile per hour wind shear trying to land in Chicago. It took our pilot over an hour to find a pocket to land the plane. Nope. Try See, landing yeah, today. Dude. Think about oh, today. It's so windy today. Is it? Oh my I felt gosh. it. No, I f- so all right. So this was my first time. I thought about hunk today, coming in. This is the first time I ever got a little bit of motion sickness on the plane. Really? First time ever. I don't have motion sickness ever in my life. That was the first time. Huh. I was like, whoa, am I fried? Oh, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> drink last night. So I, I, I knew it was, I knew it had to be motion sickness. Oh. I've got uh, a pill for you. Worked wonders for me going to Phoenix. So I, yeah, I was riding. And riding with Kirby. I was flying oh, with two. the worst ride ever. I was flying with a buddy one time, and he used to be a pilot. In fact, he was in the air when 9-11 happened. And then he lost his job right after that because, remember, they cut travel and cut mm-hmm. pilots and all that stuff. Anyway, he went on it's to work. still not the same. Work other things in aviation. But I was sitting with him, and we were coming in. And y'all know what I'm talking about. When you're coming in, it feels like you're coming in hot. Yep. Mm-hmm. And you're coming, and, you're, and, and your wings are kind of yep. tilting one way or the other. I look back at him. He's completely fine. And I'm like, bro, are you like, are we good? Yeah, <laughs> because yeah. he used to be a pilot. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, hey man, he goes, when it's really windy, they they have to set it down fast. Really? And so if you're ever in a plane, you wonder like, why did I, why did we come in so hot? That's why, because it's windy out there, and they got to get the plane on the ground. So you're in a race against the wind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't. I ain't gonna say that. All right. So the Titans uh, started the day around 25 million over the cap. They're at, uh, I don't know, between 11 and 14 million under now uh, as they have cut Taylor Lewan, Robert Woods, Randy Bullock, and Zach Cunningham. Could Bud Dupree be next? Could Ryan Tannehill be on that list? No, nah, they ain't going to no. What do you do with I'd if, be shocked. if you keep Ryan Tannehill? I would be shocked too. But if you keep Ryan Tannehill as QB1, you got to restructure his deal. What do you do with King Henry's deal? Probably need to restructure that. And so, so this is, we told y'all a while ago, this was going to be the off season that you point back to. If they're really good in five years, you're going to point back to this off season. Mm-hmm. If they're really bad in you're five years. You're still going to point back to this off season. <laughs> Yikes. So regardless, you're pointing. No, yeah. then you're going to point back to John Robinson if that's the case. Ooh. Ooh. Now it is a, what have you done for me lately, right? Because you also have to point back, back, back to when John Robinson helped to pull them out of the depths of despair. Oh, there you go. There you go. Best way to put a spin on it. Yes. Pull them out, put them in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Balo Day Great, I think, on uh, YouTube. Worst turbulence I've ever been in was in a C-130 doing a parachute jump in the state of Washington, missed the entire drop zone, landed on top of Kmart. See, Balo, you're in a whole different <laughs> realm. That's a whole yeah, different level. Like, yeah. How you like, laying on top of Kmart? He said Kmart thought they were getting invaded. I bet they did. <laughs> I bet they did. C-130, that's Fat Albert, right? I love C-130. That's the, pl- the plane? Like, I love I seeing C-130s fly because they're so slow. Yeah. Oh, they, but it's but amazing it's really what and they can big. They can move. Hercules. Like, I I rode in one with the Blue Angels, you know, Fat Albert. jumped out with? No, that, that was Army. Oh. Dude, she's been in all kinds of adventures. But I see this. Yeah. I have. She's like climbed down buildings and everything. Yeah, which I won't ever do again. You scaved down a building? Is that what you got? Repelled. Re- Thank you. Twice. What did I do? The Omni Why Hotel and 
Uh, what was the other building? Do you understand, Don, that these build the Omni has a perfectly good elevator inside it. Yeah, like I know. Why, why would you come rappelling down? Well, it was for a good cause. It was for shatter, shatterproof, which was is uh, an addiction like response organization that helps those who suffer from addiction. So it's the whole thought of it is, you know, if you want to beat addiction, it's that first step. It's that first step over the ledge that you have to take if you're addicted to something, and mm-hmm. that's that kind of helps. But man, man. Oh, I wouldn't take that first step again. By the way, so, it's hard. Yeah, go ahead. As I was going to ask, so you, like I understand, like getting on, um, getting on a plane and jumping plane, out of yeah, it. The, you strapped to somebody on the plane, right? But the rappel down you by yourself. Yeah, like I was no. strapped to ropes. Nope. And right after I got over the edge. Oh, I gotta have anxiety just thinking about <laughs> I'm it. I'm saying, hey, you kind of crazy. Oh, uh, you kind of right crazy when I got over the over the edge, I was like, I don't want to do it anymore. They're like tough. Like you're already you, go. No, you said the start same going thing down. The, you said the same thing on the plane, and, and I would have turned around, but I didn't have a choice because I was strapped to somebody. Yeah, you were like, <laughs> can we please not do this? And he was like, eh, and jumped. No, he said, nope. <laughs> on the count of three, one, two, and he pushed me out at two. Hey, man, have you ever seen a person <laughs> knocked out in the air? I would have been punching the hell out of that man. <laughs> no, because that is your survivor. Well, we both gone because I uh, didn't <laughs> tell you to push me. Candy B said, uh, hey, Slade, Slade can jump out of a plane now. No, you okay. you can. Oh, my gosh. Woo! Army Golden Knights, <laughs> we have your next jumper. I got to check with my, my coach. No, you don't. Because no, I don't know if that's in my, my – um, what, what do you remember starting? you were too heavy? I now remember. you are the right weight to be able to jump out of a plane with an Army Golden Knight. Yeah. They're the best in the world. Yeah, right. but we got to walk in this thing. Like, it ain't no, it's like you trying to speed <laughs> Plane's race. Plane's perfectly through. good landing. Yeah, you know, too, it's, yeah. you're trying to speed race through everything. Like, let's worry about the marathon first and then we'll, like, let's get Don't to that. Don't bring up the marathon to her. I'm hoping yeah. she'll forget about Dude, it. Dude, I would much rather do that than jump out the damn plane. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what about driving an IndyCar? Because we're going to talk with Alex Rossi. He actually won Ooh, I've the... done that, too. It's oh, amazing. Don't listen to her. <laughs> Damn Tarzan and Jane over here we with. Both of them in one body. Exactly. <laughs> turned amongst itself. Uh, Alex Rossi won the 100th running of the Indy 500 as a rookie. You've got the Big Machine Music City Grand Prix coming up. This dude is interesting, man. He grew up in California, but he's a Patriots fan, and there's a reason. He was on The Amazing Race with another Indy car driver, and he's got a podcast off track with Hinch and Rossi. I look forward to this. Also, Todd Furman next segment. Coming up. Stay tuned. Well, if you waited till this week, you probably waited a second too long because you know why, Babsy? It's hot. It's getting hot, man, and it's getting hot in here. I, I almost broke in it. and said that. <laughs> See, you would have yeah. been right. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're same weight, man. But if you would have broken somebody's house, you're, you probably would have been hot. And we don't want you to be hot. Be cool if you're going, well, <laughs> when you're so heating it. If I break into somebody's <laughs> yeah, house, don't, don't, you hope the air conditioning works so I won't is, be hot. This is where we are. I would love to take this from me right now. Yeah, like, <laughs> Spring Hill Heating and Cooling, people. How about That's that? Right. Spring Hill Heating and Cooling. Maybe you realize you need to turn your air on because it's 79 degrees right now outside. And then maybe you realize your air unit doesn't work. Don't worry. Spring Hill Heating and Cooling, Kevin and the family, they are there for you. Uh, And we're going to have more days of 80 here coming up. So if you need help, give them a call. You can always go online, springhillac.com. Now is the time to take advantage of them. Uh, Spring Hill Heating and Cooling helping you out. Even if you think that maybe there might be an issue coming up. That's right. Call them. Call them. (laughs) Springhillac.com.
Buddy Hell Carpet One, they're going to hook you up with the flooring project of your dreams. You just need to check them out in Donaldson. Locally owned and operated by the Allen family. They've been there for more than 55 years. Zach, Jenna, and Judson Allen are there now. They are in the store every day. They're awesome people. I've known them a long time. They're going to do you right. 2405 Lebanon Pike and Donaldson, 615-883-3289. Free in-home measures and estimates. They will handle the installation part of the project as well, so they'll be there every step of the way. Check them out online, buddyallencarpet1.com. Three HL one zero four five the zone. Brent Doherty, Don Davenport, and Ron Slay. Producer Joe Hunk. The Big Machine Music City Grand Prix coming up. Check out all the information. MusicCityGP.com. We've got an Indy five hundred winner on the line with us. Alex Rossi joins us. Indy car driver. Alex, what's up? 
There you are, Alex. Alex what's Rossi. up? Top of the line, one. Yo, Alex. Alex Rossi. Yes, sir. Hey, hey what's oh, up, man? Hey. You're, on the, you're on the air, by the way. <laughs> what's happening? Hey, guys. How you doing? Hey, good we're good. You. We're good. Uh, what? So, what's going on? I, just reading through your bio, you've got like a really interesting path, like podcast and amazing race. Patriots fan growing up in California, like, seemed like a really interesting dude to me. Um, okay, sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I started racing um, when I was 10 in, in California. I moved to Europe when I was 16 and was there for eight years and got the opportunity to come back and, and race an IndyCar, and here we are. What does it feel like to – sorry, Babs, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say how – Fill me in on the getting into racing. You started in California. I feel like a lot of racers started in California, uh, but then it ended up moving overseas. Just kind of fill us in on that process of, of getting into what you do. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, the goal as a kid was to, to get to Formula One. Um, I just grew up in a household of, of race fans. My parents were, were very passionate about the sport and, um, yeah, so at the at the age of ten, like I, I finally convinced my parents as a little pestering child uh, to let me go go kart racing, and and you know the the path and the goal for us really from day one was was to go to Europe as soon as possible, and so I moved there when I was sixteen, and wow, um, got to Formula One when um, I was twenty three, and uh, kind of did that for. A period of time and then the team that i was driving for ended up going out of business um and at the same time andretti autosport was merging with a with another team in indy bar um and so they were going to have a, a fourth car that they didn't usually have and so that deal came together uh kind of very quickly because i needed a team they needed a driver and um we won the indy 500 together That's and crazy. had a great kind of seven years and, and i switched organizations now um, and so, yeah, looking forward to the year. That's so crazy. When, when you were talking about, like, you start racing at 10, and then you move to Europe at 16, and I immediately thought, I guess it was pretty easy for you to, like, pass your driver's test to get your driver's license? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you'd be surprised. I actually almost didn't pass it. Uh, <laughs> because, like, they don't, they don't teach you how to parallel park in racing, so that was, that was borderline. <laughs> no, borderline. It'd be funny if you'd have gotten a speeding ticket on the driver's test. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, that, was probably, that was probably borderline too. Yeah. Well, so you you kind of you kind of highlighted the grind that that you were on to get where you were, and next thing you know, you're a rookie winning the 100th running of the Indy 500. Like, what what did the the last several laps of that race feel like? What did what did it feel like going across the finish line as a winner? Yeah, I mean, it was um, it was a race that I went into without any expectation of of winning. Um, because, you know, it was not only I was there as a rookie, but it was the first 500 I had ever attended. Like, I had no real background or knowledge of it. Like I said, you know, my goal was, was Formula One as a kid, so the Indy 500 wasn't really on my radar. So, um, oh my gosh. In, a way that, in a way, that probably helped. It helped you, yeah. um, I don't know. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was because the way we won, you know, we were on an alternate Kind of fuel strategy, and we knew that we were going to run out of fuel on the last lap. It was just a matter of when and if we would have a big enough lead at that point to kind of sustain it um, for the final kind of two and a half miles. Um, I never really thought we could win until it actually happened. Um, So it was a very strange kind of sensation because I wasn't at all prepared for kind of what was to come after that. But, you know, know, obviously something that was hugely beneficial to, to my career and, and gave me a, a foundation to, to be racing in the States for, for a long time. Big time Indy car race winner, Alex Rossi with us. Big Machine, Music City Grand Prix coming up, musiccitygp.com. Um, what what about that event? What What is what what is that course like to drive? Um, you know, I think the big thing is it's, Nashville is just an awesome city, right? You know, yeah. it's, um, it's, a, it's an event town through and through. It doesn't really matter what the event is. People are just pumped up to go, you know, do something. So I think that in combination with, you know, IndyCar racing on city streets is always a pretty high energy event. You know, you've got um, race cars that are doing almost 200 miles an hour on the streets that you drive to work every day. Um, and, you, and you kind of merge that with the fact that we go over like a body of water and you go over a bridge twice and it's very bumpy. And the race, for whatever reason, always seems to be kind of a, uh, a disaster from like a 
like a driving standards standpoint. <laughs> so, like, if you look at the past two years, the guy that's won has actually, like, crashed and had more pit stops than anyone else. But it's just one of those races where you're never out of it until it's over. So, um, it's just it's, – it's very quickly gone to, like, the, the top three – it's in the top three IndyCar events that we have, you know, wow. just behind the Indy 500 and, and Long Beach. So it's, it's it's pretty awesome to go there. I was going to say, do you enjoy that kind of a race? And what is key when you're on, on the course in Nashville? Yeah, I mean, I, I've had it two ways. You know, I've, I've been leading that race and then through no fault of my own, like just through the sequence of stuff, like you get shuffled to the back. And then last year I made a mistake early on and went pretty much to dead last and a lap down and ended up finishing fourth. So it's like, it's a race that gives and it's a race that takes away. Um, so it depends. I mean, sometimes you love those sort of races, sometimes you don't. But ultimately, I think it's an amazing show for the fans. Um, and from a spectator standpoint, like, it's literally kind of a lottery um, as to who's going to win. So I think that adds an entertainment value that's important to think about considering we are an, an entertainment property first and foremost. So is it just straight up business? You're just here to race, or do you get to go out at all before <laughs> or after? Um, well, my father moved there uh, three-ish years ago, um, so I've I've got enough. I spent enough time in the city, um, so when I come down for the race, it's it's very much in and out, um, and just try and try and do your job. But yes, yeah, certainly, I think a lot of the guys that you know either are from other countries or don't get to go to to Nashville that often, um, they definitely love kind of the scene that's around it, and, and Sunday night's a pretty good time for, for a lot of guys. Well, hang on. So your dad lives here. Does he listen to 3HL? Like, what? how do you end Are up you here? Are really going to set us up for failure here? <laughs> um, no, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, he lives in Green Hills. Uh, he, he remarried, and his, his wife wanted to live in Nashville. They lived in, in kind of between Scottsdale and Los Angeles, and Wow. Like a lot of people, they decided to go to Nashville from the West Coast. So there you go. Uh, they love it there. I I live in Indy, so I'm I'm fairly close and um, have come to really enjoy the city. Nice. All right, we've got. I did it to you. Yes, <laughs> no, like, you, go you ahead, man. no, you cool. Oh, no. I, I was, I was, one question for you: How long does it take for you to like relax? And what do you do after one of these races? Like you gotta. After a, a big game, like, I want to have a cigar, sit back, get in the hot tub or something, and just relax. <laughs> what do you do to to just relieve the stress and just relax after a race? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's getting home um, as soon as possible. So I actually got my pilot's license to kind of help aid that. So I literally get in my plane and fly home. And then, this yeah, guy. sit in the hot tub or the pool or, or whatever. So like that, it, you know, <laughs> we, we travel so much. Um, you know, just being home and having your own routine and being with friends and family is kind of the best Alex, relaxation you can have. Alex Rossi with us, uh, IndyCar uh, driver. All right, so clearly you love to do, like, uh, not dangerous things, but, like, high-octane things. Yes, like, dangerous things. What's the craziest <laughs> thing you've ever done? Like, like Babs, our co-host over here, she's jumped out of numerous planes. She's been with the the Blue Angels. She's been in an Indy car. Like, what, what's yeah. the craziest Drives thing? Drives 200 done? on the regular street. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think the thing that was, like, most most nerve-wracking was, um, shoot, it was probably 20, it was 2014. Um, I went on a hella skiing trip with some buddies in Alaska, um, and that was some pretty – interesting situations and scenarios that we got ourselves in um involving animals no more like avalanche potential and stuff oh jeez um, so that was that was kind of the, the one time where i was like yeah i probably shouldn't be doing this but the rest is pretty it's okay <laughs> you survived survive right. in advance but before yeah, we're, we let, we're still here before we let you go here. and uh shout out green hills that's where i grew up um the Amazing Race. Tell tell us about that experience where, where you were on the Amazing Race with, with a fellow IndyCar driver. What what was that? Yeah, no, so we um, I was on that in 2017, uh, season 30 for those that want to check it out. And um, they, uh, they, they, I don't know really how it started, but, but they came to me and, and Connor Day, who has been a longtime friend of mine way before we were IndyCar drivers, and they just asked if we wanted to go on shows, kind of an athlete um, special uh, season, if you will. 
our athlete heavy season, and um, it was pretty cool. Like the 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 race part of it was awesome. The time in between like episodes when all of production had to move was pretty miserable because they kind of just put you in a hotel room and lock you in, and you can't really do see or speak to anyone. Um, but other than that, like it was a pretty yeah. cool experience. Oh, that's cool. cool. That's cool. Hey, good luck in the event, man. Uh, We're looking forward to it. We really appreciate the visit, and uh, I was right. You're really interesting. Thank you, man. Yeah, next time you're in Nashville, come hang with us in studio. Yeah, bring Dad. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good, guys. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Thanks, Alex. See you, man. How about that? Yeah. It's all right, right, though. From an Indy (laughs) Indy 5... Hundred chip. That's all right. right I've there. never been to. <laughs> never funny. been to the Indy Five Hundred. Never really, you know, watched it. So my, Who so my doing? man is winning the Indy Five Hundred as a rookie, having grinded out with no team, finds a team, ends up in that situation, and it really wasn't a big deal to him because he didn't know really the didn't history know. of the Indy Five Hundred. Like, oh, yeah, great, wow. great. I'm here. Todd Furman does. Uh, Todd, we're talking about like really dangerous things we've done in life. What, what's the most dangerous thing you've done? For me, I would say probably skydiving and bungee jumping. Uh, we'll go into those particular buckets. When I was on spring break for my semester spent abroad in Australia. So that was probably the most aggressive I've gotten, other than walking uh, off Las Vegas Boulevard at 4 o'clock in the morning, which from a degree of difficulty, I don't encourage anybody to do on their sojourns to Vegas. <laughs> why, Todd, why did you wait till you went down under to go bungee jumping or skydiving? I mean, peer pressure is a bitch in the grand scheme of things. So, you know, we're on a trip. They describe it as an adventure experience for eight days. You got a lot of your buddies going bungee jumping at 10 o'clock at night. You got a lot of your friends jumping out of a plane. I go, what the hell do I got to lose here? So I figured uh, skydiving over the Great Barrier Reef was a once in a lifetime opportunity that I couldn't wow. pass up. I'm not sure I have the guts to do it again, but I'll tell you one thing. I'm felt better jumping out of the plane than I would have felt if I actually had to land in the little puddle jumper that they took us up with. Oh, yeah. yeah. I feel it. Mm-hmm. All right, gracious. so with football gone, where have you turned your attention uh, in terms of uh, expanding your betting basketball, portfolio? Basketball. The NHL and NASCAR get the lion's share of my attention right now, <laughs> trying to f- a cram for final exams, a.k.a. the NCAA tournament as well, and catch up. The problem being is anytime I want to watch an SEC basketball game these days, all I get is Ron Slay on the call <laughs> or Slay taking pictures of his fits like he's an 18-year-old Instagram model out there. So it's a little bit disconcerting <laughs> for my college basketball coverage. But, yeah, the NHL and NASCAR are where I'll do a lot of my heavy lifting. Uh, but definitely in catch-up mode for college basketball. And uh, great to see parity at the top this year. Uh, I hate to see, though, one potential national championship contender have their season marred by what's unfolding Every single minute right now down there in Tuscaloosa. I'm I'm glad you brought that up because we will talk about Brandon Miller uh, during Mm -hmm. today's show. Alabama did release a statement that their AD did that he went through, uh, walked through in preparation for the game and will play tonight. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, for me, again, I haven't been in those kind of situations. Uh, You hope that they're going to do the right thing by the players, by the community, and everything else involved. Just the timing of the situation looks a little bizarre now, knowing when the incident unfolded, knowing when Greg Byrne gave NATO an extension, and that was one of the more enigmatic press conferences I've seen from a head coach. You figure the PR team or the lawyers would have crafted up a statement and not said things as contentious uh, as what was unfolding yesterday uh, throughout the course of the media. Todd Father, if you got anything, what give it to us on NHL. Give it, we, like I, I want some. I want some action. You know, I, I got nothing tonight, Slay. You got a three-game hey. slate that's out there. Uh, nothing really to write home about. Maybe if you wanted to dabble small on the Blackhawks and Stars under, but no investments for me as things stand right now. I have been a little bit surprised, though, with the strength and the move we've seen towards the Winnipeg Jets against the undermanned Islanders. And unfortunately, guys, you know, every game that passes – It appears the Preds dig themselves further and further into a hole, especially with some of the injuries now to Marcus Johansson will be lost, and we'll see if Philip Forsberg can return sooner rather than later. So are there there a couple of teams that you've been riding this year that that we need to know about that have been undervalued? As far as the NHL is concerned, I mean, the one team that's been most overvalued has been Calgary. They continue to get priced like they're an elite side, but they haven't lived up to those expectations. Their record right now, if you factor in ties, which you always have to do when you're looking at records, I mean, they're essentially 26 and 28. They've lost people more money than any team in the league. I think the two most pronounced trends that we've seen unfolding recently, and I know it's not a fun way to bet or watch games, the Dallas Stars and the Minnesota Wild are already looking at the, like they want to be buttoned up in playoff mode. I mean, these teams are playing a lot of 
3-2 hockey games, and you're seeing that bear plenty of fruit as far as betting their totals under uh, at a very high success rate over the last 10 to 15 games. So something that worth monitoring there is NHL totals. Typically now we're looking at sixes, more or less the average compared to what we would have seen years ago with five, five and a half with goaltending reigning supreme. So I'm glancing at Carolina, and they still can really, really score. Is, is that true, or am I just catching games when they're scoring? No, the Hurricanes definitely a team to beat in the Eastern Conference. The East will be a full-blown gauntlet uh, from top to bottom. There, I don't think there's going to be an easy out, and this is a team that's been close before and looking to try and break through. So they have a lot more depth offensively. They're getting scoring up and down their roster, and more importantly from them, with the addition of Brent Burns on their blue line, they're getting contributions from the back end. So Carolina will definitely pose a real threat coming out of the East, but when you look record-wise right now, nobody holding a torch to Boston, and I'm very curious to see what some of these contenders do over the next nine days or so before the NHL trade deadline comes up on March 3rd, and I think Preds fans should probably hope that maybe they move some of their veteran pieces as well and start slowly looking to retool, as I'm not sure this core is going to bring them the cup uh, that Music City would like. Uh, switching over to NASCAR, I know you love it. Uh, I know Mickey Ryan loves it, and I know that you know several people that listen to us love it. Um, so Auto Club Speedway coming up, NASCAR Cup Series at California. What, what do you think? The big problem this weekend is Mother Nature, and let's see if she complies with our wishes. The forecasts don't look great for California anywhere throughout the Southwest. So we'll see if we get practice and cars on the track on Saturday. We'll see if we're able to get the full distance in on Sunday. We can start in the Xfinity Series on Saturday, though. Cole Custer basically gets relegated. He was in the Cup Series last year driving the 41 car for Stuart Haas. I think he'll go out and dominate more Xfinity races than people expect this year. I know he's listed as one of the co-favorites there, but I think the price at four, four and a half to one is extremely generous. I know we haven't seen him practice yet we don't know exactly what kind of machine he'll have under him but at the same time you know my numbers coming into the week made him much closer to the two two and a half range so that's one guy and as far as the cup is concerned uh, i want to keep tabs on kyle bush Uh, i'm very curious to see how his change in manufacturer and team will do for him it's always dangerous when you talk about an elite driver arguably one of the best of this generation racing with a chip on his shoulders if kyle didn't have one before he definitely will now so Keep cl- pay close attention to the eight car and a price at ten to one. Maybe worth a small nibble right now uh, before we see how good he can actually be on race day. Todd Furman, our guy in Vegas, bet the board podcast at Todd Furman on Twitter. Do you live bet NASCAR too? I do not, only because it's not available out here oh, okay. in the state of Nevada, but okay. some of the guys that I work with do quite a bit, and they say it's an extremely lucrative pursuit when you're talking about some inefficiency in the market and the algorithms that we've grown accustomed to with the NFL and college basketball where there's countless uh, sample size and a lot of data points that they can use to build in to some of the machine learning. Not the same in NASCAR. So if you're watching the race, you can oftentimes find a little bit of an edge. The biggest challenge in not only betting NASCAR live, but a lot of other sports, just do your best to detach emotion from the equation. Make sure you're trusting what your eyes are actually seeing, not some of the preconceived notions you've come in with. And the same thing will resonate with folks that you know want to watch some of these marquee college basketball games tonight. The perfect example, Kentucky and Florida. Let's see how the Gators look without Colin Castleton, who was their leading scorer the first time around. If they're playing with momentum, we've seen Kentucky can be a little bit vulnerable. Maybe you'll get a better line on a home underdog uh, with Florida if that's the way you want to go instead of taking two and a half before the game tips off. Mm-mm. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Slay was shaking his head nope. as you were talking. Sorry, yeah, talk about and rolling his them. eyes. They're going to blast them folks, man, down in Florida. <laughs> Slay's got a lot more confidence in the uh, Mercurial Wildcats and their up and down season anything else. But Slay, you know, what about Vandy? Is their stock at the top of the market now, given how well they're playing, being a road favorite for their trip down to Baton Rouge? Yep, they're going to cover against LSU and Bama. Uh, I got South Carolina covering against Bama tonight. 17 and I can definitely see the game. Ga- yeah, I can definitely see the Gamecocks there. Big number. We saw some money come in there on the dog from 18 down to 17. And you wonder where Alabama's heads are, if the players are going to be fully entrenched in this spot, going to give it their all for 40 minutes, or if South Carolina can hang around that particular number. But uh, very interesting to see. Uh, when you look at, obviously, the college basketball landscape, I'd have to say one of the marquee games of the day tips off early between Providence and UConn. I'm mm. curious to see if this UConn team has figured things out after they went through uh, a little bit of a swoon in Big East Conference play earlier. I think the Big East uh, can put together a run with a couple of teams that are more than capable of getting to that second weekend. I totally agree. I totally agree with that. Hey, Todd, Todd. did you ever uh, bet on the Music City IndyCar race? You know what, Don? I haven't done a ton of IndyCar betting in the past. The Indy 500, uh, I bet pretty religiously every year because we Mm -hmm. trust the data that we get through multiple practices, through carb day. Uh, It can really lean into the numbers. 
when you're looking at some of the Grand Prix and the street circuits, it's so difficult to try and figure out what you're getting because the practice times aren't always indicative of how the cars are going to perform because yeah. if you're not watching, you're not sure if somebody's blocked in you know, or where the cautions have been thrown. So from an IndyCar standpoint, I'll typically watch the races when they're on, but not something that I've really bet religiously or can find much of an edge. One thing uh, I will say, Kyle Kirkwood has actually seen some money to win the IndyCar championship this year. Big time long shot and obviously going to have – uh, the deck stacked against him, but he's a driver that may offer some value early in the season before uh, odds makers catch up to him. There you go. Thank you, Todd. Great uh, stuff, Bob? man. Appreciate you. Always a pleasure, guys. Have a great rest of the week and look forward to catching up next week, same time. Right. Uh, Todd Thanks, Furman. On Twitter. Um, guess what? What? No, you go. Oh, I was just hey. going to say, just to follow up on our, our IndyCar stuff, the Big Machine Music City Grand Prix tickets mm-hmm. go on sale today. That's Perfect. why we had alexander rossi on um chatted with him so yeah they uh that race is in nashville which brent didn't you go last year i did not uh but everybody that i've talked to that has gone has said it's a phenomenal like, event. loved it yeah, yeah it's august 4th through the 6th this year which is perfect timing right before football season there you go musiccitygp.com is where you can get that done guess what it's liner time and i'm gonna do it no oh, you're not i'll do it no you're no, no you're not you're cut off no her. You're done. So I can do it when we come back. How about that? Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> These are entertaining liners. It's like this. Yeah. It's just, and when I do it, it's like calling all Nashville SC fans. That's yeah. not exciting. No, I got some asking. I'm asking doing the liner, doing the liners. Like you were saying, ass kicking. <laughs> doing the liners. Too. Yeah. Uh, 3HL more Break. next. Yeah. <laughs> Looking for something fun to do tonight? Belmont basketball. They've got you covered in less than two hours. They will hit the floor against Indiana State. And we've got Belmont AD Scott Corley on the line with us. Scott, uh, exciting night. It's the last regular season game at Belmont Curve Event Center this year. It's unbelievable. It's gone really fast. Uh, We do have a couple more women's games uh, Thursday, Saturday. But for the men, it is uh, the final home game. So it's senior day. It's an opportunity for all our fans to come out and honor four great seniors led by Ben Shepard, who's a player of the year candidate in the Missouri Valley. So it's going to be a fun night. It's always a fun night to uh, go take out Belmont basketball. I talk about the style of play, Casey Alexander, the guys on the floor, they do such a great job and it's fun to watch. But I will say this too, like your marketing team and all of the people that work to help put on these events, phenomenal job. Uh, Without a doubt. We're blessed with great, talented, passionate people that love what they do and and I'm glad to hear that that translates. Uh, you know, when when we get first-time fans coming into the curve, they they always walk away saying how they impressed they are. And so I, I appreciate you saying that. It is. It's a first-class uh, game ex- game day experience. Belmont AD Scott Corley. Belmont basketball tonight against Indiana State. You can get tickets at the door, belmontbruins.com. Belmont at 19-10, and 10, looking for win number 20 tonight in the last regular season home game. Get there, belmontbruins.com.
Prairie Town 1045 The Zone. Brent Doherty, Don Davenport, Ron Slay with you. Producer Joe Hunk, also involved. Um, so Brandon Miller, according to Alabama's AD, is it Greg Byrne that's at Alabama now? Yeah. Yes. Um, saying that he went through the walkthrough in advance of tonight's game against South Carolina and that uh, – yeah, we'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> Slay just showed me the liner sheet. <laughs> Yeah, we'll get to that. We'll need something, uh, some levity uh, in a second. <laughs> um, but said he went through the walkthrough and that he will play tonight. So Alabama has released a statement. University of Alabama Athletics continues to cooperate fully with law enforcement in the ongoing investigation of this tragic situation. Based on all the information we have received, Brandon Miller is not considered a suspect in this case, only a cooperative witness. Today's statement from Brandon's lawyer adds additional context to that the university has considered as part of its review of the facts. Based on all of the facts that we have get, gathered, Brandon remains an active member of the team. So um, just kind of reading through some of the story. like So then if you read the ESPN story, police, Alabama star Brandon Miller delivered gun used in shooting. That's the headline. And then here's what the story uh. said, the first two paragraphs. Alabama freshman basketball standout Brandon Miller brought a teammate the handgun that was used to kill a woman last month, according to police in Tuscaloosa. Tuscaloosa detective Brandon Culpepper testified Tuesday that Miller brought Darius Miles' gun to him on the night of the fatal shooting of 23-year-old uh, Jamia Jonay Harris after Miles texted him and asked him to bring him his gun. Mm -hmm. Culpepper's testimony came during a preliminary hearing for Miles and Michael Lynn Davis, who face capital murder charges for the death of Harris, who was shot and killed near the University of Alabama campus on January 15th. Um, investigators wrote in a court document that Miles, who has since been removed from the Crimson Tide program, admitted to providing the gun used in the fatal shooting, but that Davis fired the weapon. So the story is, and a lot of people are um, debating this, the ha Alabama's handling of this situation. A lot of people saying that Brandon Miller should never play another minute of basketball at Alabama. Other people are saying his buddy told him to bring him his gun. He doesn't know why, so he just did it. Mm -hmm. And and a lot of people reading just the headline and not digging in and reading the, story. the entire story. Yeah, that that's my problem with it. Now, what happened? Let me tell you my 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 whole perspective on this. Now. Me knowing who Brandon Miller is, knowing who his family is, knowing the type of upbringing he had, um, feel a different way about this. If this was a recurring theme of Brandon being in trouble all the time while he was growing up here in Nashville, in Antioch, in Nashville, playing all over the city, playing all over the, the country, um, I, I think it would be a problem and it would be a red flag would go up. That's not the case in this situation. Um, looking at it, if you were to dig into this case, and I'm not speaking on what Darius Miles did or the person that did the shooting. I'm speaking solely on Brandon Miller, who is getting all of the headlines because of him being the star attraction associated with this case. Um, what happened was, give you a scenario. If I'm licensed to carry, I am, which I am, not if, I'm licensed to carry, which I don't think you have to be in Tennessee anymore. But You don't, not I, anymore. Right. So I'm licensed to carry a firearm, and I carry my firearm. And when I get dropped off at home by Babsy, Babsy drops me off at home. And I tell Babsy five minutes later, oh, darn, I left my gun in your car. Babsy, hey, and I text Babsy, hey, bring my bring my gun back up here. Bring my gun back up to the house. And when she pulls up, oh, okay, pulls back up, I get the gun out of her car where I dropped it at or where I put it at, or wherever it is, it, wherever whatever. I left it, yeah. I grab the gun and go on, and Babsy pulls on off. I right, see you later. That's it. Babsy doesn't. I didn't. Babsy didn't ask what you're gonna do with the gun. What am I? What's going on? None of this. So the young that's, man asked that's for the scenario of Brandon Miller is what you're saying. Exactly. Which is why Nate Oates didn't think twice about uh, what comes off as extremely disrespectful right. in his press conference and saying wrong time. Wrong place. Do you you have what he said, don't you, Hunk? And a lot of people. So that's why Nate Oates sounded yeah. tone deaf, and and yeah. it, it was a bad 
mm-hmm. bad. It's bad op- optics by Re- Nate really Oates. Really bad. Really bad. Here, here's the other thing. Like a lot of people are saying, and well, kind of heartless. Well, it sounds heartless. Brandon blocked her vehicle. And and then this stuff happened. Well, his attorney today denied that. I was, was going to say it's documented. that allegation. And it's on, see, so for the people that's going to dig into it about this kid blocking the Jeep or whatever it was, he didn't block the Jeep because it's on video. It's on video that he didn't. And what it's, was it's the documented. attorney's statement? Read exact it. statement. Before Brandon arrived to pick up Mr. Miles, Mr. Miles and the individual with Ms. Harris apparently exchanged words. Without Brandon knowing any of the context, and as Brandon was already on the way to pick up Mr. Miles, Mr. Miles texts Brandon and asks him to bring him his firearm. Brandon subsequently arrived at the scene to pick up Mr. Miles. Brandon never got out of the vehicle or interacted with anyone in Ms. Harris's party. He was never involved in a verbal altercation with Cedric Johnson or Ms. Davis. Brandon never touched the gun, was not involved in the exchange to Mr. De- Mr. Davis in any way, and never knew that illegal activity involving a gun would occur. Now, here you go. Brandon did not block the Jeep driven by Mr. Johnson. In fact, Brandon had already parked on Gray Street when the Jeep pulled up behind him. The street was never blocked by Brandon's vehicle. Gunfire empty. Gunfire erupted shortly after the Jeep arrived, and Brandon's vehicle was struck by bullets fired from one of the guns. Brandon quickly left the area when gunfire erupted. As soon as he was notified that someone had been injured and the police wished to speak with him, he has fully cooperated with law enforcement's investigation. All of the events described above are clearly captured on video. There is no dispute about Brandon's activities during this evening. Brandon has submitted to multiple interviews to assist law enforcement in further understanding the situation. He has volunteered to have his phone contact Contents extracted as well as that of the contents of his automobile. He will continue to cooperate as any citizen should who has witnessed a serious incident. Brandon does not own a firearm and has never handled a firearm. Moreover, he knew he had no knowledge of any intent to use the weapon. This is on video. So, I mean, like, I, 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 what happened? A shame. Tragedy. Tragedy. Without You've question. You've just gone through this. Yeah, I, like, yeah, exactly. E- exactly. And so for him to come forth, be forthcoming and give his cell phone and things of that nature, listen, dealing with a situation like this, for that to happen, people don't just do that. If you got any, any inkling of anything, they don't do it. I'm telling you because I'm dealing with it still to this day. But. For those Just that saying. don't know, you lost your brother. Right. To murder. exactly. Right. Yeah. So I like, hey man, this, this ain't that kid. This ain't that kid. I'm telling you. And for people that are out there saying somebody needs to grab hold of him and sit him down and give him guidance, no, he doesn't. No, you do not. This is a young man who has parents, who has grandparents that are in his life and mentors in his life. He will be fine. Yes, it is a wake up call and it's rings your bell. All of us have been through it. I got things that I've been through that. It'll come out in a book later, but you'll be like, darn, okay, I didn't know this. I got situations as a sophomore where I had to do things and would talk to other people, and it was, it could have been a big deal. But you make mistakes and you get your bell rung and you get oh you you get to walk away from a situation that could have been bad for you. Yeah. And make sure you're not around exactly people that Exactly. That's what Richie James exactly. told us on Radio yes. Row about Rick Stockstill. He said it, it it's not even the football that I remember about that guy. It's the things that he, he put into us as men. You know what I'm saying? And like, he said you are who you're with. Come on, man. Come on now. Like and, this this mm. And so this from, ain't that kid. I learned early on about you, like you're friends with everybody. And there's no way to know what anybody you come in contact with right. is, is going to do. Now right. it, yeah, this this is uh this is just one of those things where people just love to jump on it early mm-hmm. when you have the headline and not my not the And that's facts. all I'm saying. Just do the homework, man. Do the homework first. Before I initially you, thought it was Brandon Miller's gun. Yeah, I did too. And that's how by I read. reading it's the how headlines. Read. So Big Savagery is asking that question in the in the YouTube chat. Ramon Foster. It was Darius Miles's gun. Right, and that's what you got to realize. That's it's why Miles behind is it. Miles is yeah. exactly. All right, uh, no time for your liner. We'll do that when we come back. Five o'clock hour is coming up, so we've got Slay's liner. Black man in black uh, jerseys. <laughs> <laughs> Something's going on. In this. Let's see. Black, black man it. in black jersey. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> we'll get to it. Uh, also, Baptist Prize Closet's open next hour. That's Two right. Liners. And the Titans have made a bunch of cuts. We'll talk about that next and hopefully get your reaction. 615-737-1045.
Go up to Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. That's where you need to go to get that next new vehicle. Whether you're looking for a car, truck, SUV, or Jeep, Gupton will have you covered, new or pre-owned. They have what you're looking for, and uh, they just want to talk with you about what will be right for you vehicle-wise because your goal is to get the vehicle that's right for you financially or maybe you need something bigger, maybe you need something more reliable. Uh, they will put no pressure on you. They just want the same thing, you and the vehicle that's right for you. So you'll figure that out. You'll take your test drive. You'll go inside. You'll, they will help make the numbers work, and it'll be that easy. GuptonMotors.com was on the website the other day. Uh, they've got the inventory there. They've got uh, all the dealership information there as well. That's GuptonMotors.com. 3450 Tom Austin Highway in beautiful Springfield, Tennessee. Take 24 West or Clarksville. Uh, exit 35, about nine miles outside the city, and then uh, head into Springfield. Best vehicle buying experience you've ever had. That's Gupton Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram.
Good evening from the Superbook.com Sports Desk. I'm Joe Hogg. The news today is that the Tennessee Titans have cut four different players. Taylor Lewan, Robert Woods, Randy Bullock, and Zach Cunningham. That frees up over $37.7 million in cap space. What does that mean? Well, starting the day, the Titans actually had $25 million that were over in the cap limit. Now, because of all the moves, they are now between $11 and $12 million under the limit for all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs you need to visit usstn.com breaking news at once and your home for the balls the flagship station for your tennessee titans and home to 3hl this is 104.5 the zone Welcome in to 3HL on 104.5 The Zone. Power by Spring Hill Heating and Cooling, people. Welcome back in on this great, great, great home day. Home day. That's right. Yes, you are joined by Yoro and the one and only Babsy. That's, that's, that's bunk. That's bunk. It's a that's bunk kind of day. Which one day? Titans have been busy as well. What's yes, up, Mayor? Hey, Mayor's here. I had a Ron Slay moment. Oh, yeah. You're not to actually go to the bathroom instead of like try to deal with it in the studio. See, oh. smart man. Smart man. Hit Thanks. Me late. Plus, I thought we had time. Anyway, oh, cool. You did not. Yes. Uh, 3HL 104.5 The Zone presented by Spring Hill Heating and Cooling, SpringHillAC.com. Did you guys do intros? We did. Oh, we did, Babs. Half of them. Did Joseph. Well, Joe Hunk behind the glass. What up, Hunky Hunk? What's up? What's up? Hunky hunk. Also, Ron Slay. Hey, I'm in the build. Best believe I'm in the build. Better be ready. I'm in the Made that mic pop right there. Call ain't got no rules. you did. Make it pop when you talk about the Nashville SC. How, how challenging oh. is it to monitor Ron Slay's microphone while he's recording commercials and things like that? Virtually impossible because he would he will record an amazing spot talking about like a awake, awaken 180, and I'll be like, all right, Slay. So like the last half of that, I need you to back away from the microphone about a foot and a half and do the exact same thing. And then he does it. And I'm like, okay, make that back up three feet. I need you a yard back now, just because you keep making the microphone pop. He makes the microphone. pop. Pop, he also can read liners. Oh, here we go. What um <laughs> now this is my my okay. <laughs> this is the troubling one. The one oh the one oh four five the zone ticket window is now open. No, 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 no. <laughs> Not that one. I literally told you Nashville SC, I set it on the air. Ah. Man in black. Times, Men in black. The times mixed me up. Okay. Calling all the Nashville SC fans. Listen to Ramon Kalen Will. To find out how you can win Nashville Soccer Club tickets to the home opening. The home opening of the oh. man. Men, it will be guys, the athletes will have <laughs> on black honoring Johnny Cash. They're calling it man in black. Yeah. But it would be a lot of men on the field in black. Match this Saturday plus two men in black jerseys because... Man in black jersey. Plural. Yeah. Not singular. Two man in black jerseys. Be two man. Yeah, but two two man in parentheses were, if, men. If there are a bunch of men in black, then we would have like aliens and stuff popping up. Bingo. Will Smith and what's our other guy? Tommy Harvey. Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones would be here. I almost said Harvey Keitel. Where did I get that? <laughs> Harvey got something to do with it though. I don't know what it's got to do with it, but um black jerseys. Um, for more info, ladies and gentlemen, to purchase tickets, I made it pop again. Then, uh, you've made it pop like four times through this. I'm gonna back up a little bit. For more info or to purchase tickets, visit nashvillesc.com slash tickets exclamation mark or point. <laughs> oh, point. That's right. Hey. Yeah, I like it when you put your broadcast voice on. You know, and it made yeah. me go louder. I don't even I didn't even need to be that loud. Trust me, we don't need you to be louder. We just don't, man. You know what I'm saying? To read the liner, though, I got loud. Should I go and read this last one? Uh, no, you need to read the last one at 545 as we're getting ready for the after party. That's my go-to right there. 
Well, since oh, I already man. read the other one, let's go and get Babsy's prize closet out of the way. What? No. No, it's no. not time. We still have like 30 minutes. Hey, got, I was on the roll. We, we got this guy going, man. I was on the roll. We can't uh, pull you back. I'm ready, I'm ready to go, you all. Yeah. I'm ready to get to you the line. You want to give the 3HL after party? Yeah, party? yeah. That's, did, that's what I just bro, said. Bro, if Rand Carthon asked you to cut the players, you would just open up the door and told the next one to come in. Like, I'm doing it. Might but well just but keep Dupree going. would be gone already. Come on. Y'all, y'all, y'all had a list. Jeez. Oh, wait, no. Tannehill. Oh, wait. No, no, no. Not, not him. Not him. See, not him. Say slow huh? down. <laughs> Send the wrong people to the Reaper. <laughs> oh, no, you straighten them, man, my bad. That's like when Jesse Palmer on The Bachelor. Did y'all see this? No. When Jesse Palmer was The Bachelor, he was giving his last rose out on one of these rose ceremonies. This might have been the last one I watched. It just kind of flew the coop for me. But um, <laughs> I don't want to flew the coop. It's a great film. Yes, it is. Jack Nicholson. Mm-hmm. Nurse Ratchet. <laughs> Ratchet. <laughs> Wasn't that her name? Yeah, it was her name, I believe. <laughs> I think I'm that's right. Sure. Anyway, yeah. what was I saying? Oh, um, uh, Jesse Palmer. So Jesse Palmer <laughs> comes up with this girl, and her, her name was Mary or something, and he was like, it was the last rose. He was holding the last rose, and he yeah. goes, Mary, I want you to have this rose. And the wrong, there were two Marys, and the wrong one came up. Oh, no. Oh. And he was like, uh, Chris, I need to talk to you. Like, he gave it to her, and then she walked back, and he looked like he had seen a ghost. Not Bobby Brown's ghost, Why'd but like a gro- ghost. Yeah, that one, that Why one didn't the terrible. other Mary get on her horse yeah. and get up there? Yeah, it's Mary, Mary. <laughs> like your, one of the Marys your, know, and one of the problem. that's the problem. The other Mary, I knew. think the one just knew. Like if I hear that name, I'm going. I'm, <laughs> can't be talking about that other Mary. Dude, I'm waiting for this gun to go off. <laughs> pun not intended. That Mary crazy. <laughs> Start the race. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> so Jesse Palmer goes, Chris, let me, let me, I need to talk to you. So they talk, and he's like, I gave the wrong Mary the. Rose. And so they gave him another rose, so he picked the other Mary, too. So he got to pick an two? extra person. So he went home with two? It doesn't matter. Two Neither Mary. one of them, in, none of them ended up together two anyway. Marys. He got two. Yeah. I don't even two know women's. that that was her name. I don't know. Did you say two women's? Two Marys. Oh, two Marys. I thought you were like carrying a liner over to two women's on The Bachelor. Two Marys. Speaking of which, Slay. Women and I've black. already had two people call because they were trying to win because you tried to open up the prize closet and they <laughs> got confused. I told, I told them just be cool. <laughs> Ryan on YouTube, Mary, Mary, why you bugging? I didn't even give the people the number. How can they call? <laughs> well, they know what the number is. Yeah, but you got to wait. Babs always says, don't call until I give the number. <laughs> yeah, because I, I blocked the phone lines. Oh, yeah, block the phone lines, huh? <laughs> well, we used to have a different... A different prize line, and so ah. Babs would get frustrated at all the guys out there that can't listen real well, and <laughs> so they would start now. calling the li- listener line. That's cheap, it's man. true. And so then I would just answer the listener line and be like, "Tell them, hey, you're live on the air. Can we help you?" And he's like, "I'm trying to win these tickets." I'm like, and then Babs would get all frustrated. You called the wrong number. <laughs> <laughs> wrong line. But now we don't. We just use a normal one. All right. Titans yeah. started the day at around 25 million over the cap. Uh, after today's moves, they're around 11.2 million under the cap, according to uh, Mickey Ryan. And they have uh, they have released offensive tackle Taylor Lewan. Wide receiver Robert Woods, kicker Randy Bullock, and linebacker Zach Cunningham. Uh, we'll talk more about uh, the impact of that and uh, who could be next. Next, get your reaction as well. Uh, plus, Pops and Franklin wants to talk about Slay's dog, and I don't know what that means. But we'll be right back. Three HL one four five to zero. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Um, hey, I, let me say this first and foremost. I think um, Savage just said my liner, my liner day may be over with. I think they, yeah, <laughs> they, <you're done. laughs> they're getting rid of me with the liners. But didn't everybody enjoy that? It's almost all. <laughs> I'm sitting on it. And just shook her head. Anyway, guys, for you, if you want a liner, I got one for you. The, Congratulations. Studies show that one of the most attractive physical features is a full head of hair. That's right. Want to know the least attractive? Well, the most aging is hair loss. No amount of car house of success or line and reading for that. Thinning, balding, as leaves the greatest lasting physical impression. Doesn't have to be that way. Advanced hair is finally available right here in Nashville with a quick one-day solution to your hair loss. Advanced hair could help you lock 
not lock, look 10 to 20 years younger. I'm going to get all this together for y'all. You know what? Watch this. Watch how smooth this goes. No more expensive pills or special shampoos. Just your very own natural hair. Guaranteed to grow for life. Advanced hair has improved tens of thousands of lives, including top radio personalities across the country. This breakthrough treatment is finally available here in Nashville. Did I mention your own natural hair begins to grow? regrow the very next day. Call 629-348-HAIR for your free consultation and get $500 off. 629-348-HAIR or advancehair.com.
3 HL 104.5, the zone. Brent Doherty, Don Davenport, Ron Slay, producer Joe Hunk. Big day for the Titans. They, It's good that they did this all in one day, man. Mm-hmm. Not, well, not all of it. There's, there's going to be more. There's going to be some more roster management for sure. But we've been telling you all this for a long time, that this is going to be a really interesting offseason. Uh, oh, it's going to be fascinating. Bud Dupree's still on the roster. <laughs> So we'll see. And Ryan Tannehill's contract <laughs> is still in the books. So we'll see. And Derrick Henry's contract is still in the books. And there will be others. Uh, Titans started the day at around $25 million. Uh, Mickey Ryan added it up at 11.2 after the Titans cut Taylor Lewan, Robert Woods, Randy Bullock, Zach Cunningham. Uh, they could – every NFL team can cut two players – uh, at the most two players after June 1st, and it saves them money. Um, Got to do some digging on that one. But uh, um, so we'll see. Like, if if they're waiting for a couple of guys to do it that way, uh, maybe D- Bud Dupree gets caught up in that. Uh, but um, really, really good dudes, man. And and uh, certainly going to miss Taylor Lewan in this market. Um, that guy's p- personality was bigger than life. Was he still with us? Hey, Taylor. What's I know. Up? He's what not I'm dead. <laughs> Jeez. I said that before. So what I'm talking about. I know. I He's talk- just not a Titan anymore. <laughs> I haven't talked to him today. Uh, but uh, we're very thankful um, for everything that Taylor did. Um, for us to to be a conduit between player and fan. You know what yes. I mean? And he came on this radio show one time. This was last year when we all wondered if he was going to make it or if he was going to be a cap casualty last year. Mm-hmm. And he came on for, um, what, 50 minutes? Something like that? Yeah, that's Very actually long. not far off. Yeah, 45 to 50 minutes. It was the longest interview in 3HL history. Mm-hmm. We just blew through breaks. And, and I know that means nothing to y'all, but uh, usually that me- makes... Uh, you know, people above us, not very happy. Yes. Uh, but Taylor's that engaging and he's that honest and he's that forthcoming. And and so we've always appreciated him. And uh, th- remember the boss hog uh, outfit when he signed his contract. That was fun. <laughs> Classic. Uh, but uh, really, really good dude. Robert Woods too. We didn't get that much of a chance to get to know him, but on the few times that we talked with him, uh, solid, solid guy. And I, my thing is we talked about it earlier, two years off the ACL, watch him have a really good mm-hmm. year next year. Well, Mm -hmm. and especially if he has somebody else around him. I mean, Traylon Burks was was injured and and not there. He was in and out. There was no consistency there. If you have a true number one, Bobby Trees, I think, is a hell of a number two. Yeah. Or will be a a great option there. He feels feels good in that. But do you, I mean, if you look at the numbers, what do they free up by cutting him again? Eight? Uh, Who? Robert Woods? Yeah. 12.02. 12. I mean... That's a that's a no brainer. Last time I looked, now I've I've looked today, and these numbers have changed a little bit. So I, I think SpotTrack.com but does additional re- research. Um, yeah, or get some yeah. new info. So, but, but they it, actually save with Bud Dupree. They save ten point eight five, not nine point three five. Ooh, ten point eight five dead cap, and he's save. he's second in terms of percent of the cap spent. He's second on the roster. I thought. See. You, can you justify that? No, because you can't justify him playing 17 games. Yep. Yeah, that's, yeah. And it's unfortunate. Yep. Because when he's man. healthy, that is a he really made a good difference. player. Yeah. Dog. That's a really, really good. When Bud Dupree's healthy, if Harold Landry was in there, then you have Big Jeff with Danica. I mean, that's a really Maybe good big defense. Big time differences, yeah. But that's if. Yeah. If what do you say? If some ifs and fists. If some fists. Yep. If some fists. Are there ifs and buts store. on the corner? The Sorry, if some it is butts. Buts. Yeah. It's if some butts. butts are candy and nuts. Yeah, but something. it's butts too because they 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 it's butts bus. sitting out there and it's butts on the cigarette butts on the curb. Ifs and fists. Right there at the corner store. Uh, so when I made this <laughs> list uh, when we got into the off season and I wrote down Titan save um, and underlined it. And Bud Dupree, 10.85. Ryan Tannehill is 18.8 million if they cut him. Hmm. He counts 16.15% of the salary cap, Ryan Tannehill. Derrick Henry, 7.367 last time I looked. Let me look again. No, nine nine million. Who was that? Who's that me? Derrick Henry. Oh, wow. Taylor Lewan, 14.84. Um they save by releasing him. Robert Woods, 12.02. Randy Bullock, I wrote down on my list, and y'all thought I was crazy, but I'm like, go find another gigger. <laughs> I I thought you were crazy till I looked at his numbers. Yeah, and so there, and moments. then you add Zach Cunningham. I mean, and he had a good year last year. Yes, he did. Can't deny that. They like Caleb Shudek, who was on the practice squad, who was injured. 
I think they feel comfortable with him. So that was another reason yep. they made the Randy Bullock move, right? 615-737-1045 at 3HL1045, 100%. That's, that tells you they feel comfortable with the right. other guy. And they'll bring another kicker in here. There'll be competition there. I mean, what are kickers doing? <laughs> Trying to find jobs. That's it, all the time. And they need it. You want to come in and try out? Yeah, man. I'm just a kicking coach out here. God, but man, <laughs> there's some past trauma with... Bad kickers around true. here. Yes. Then, then who then went well. on? Yes. Who then went somewhere else and were good? I'm not here to assert my dominance, guy. Uh, yeah, he's a starter somewhere, right? Minnesota. Ugh. Who's that other? That little who bitty, else? That little B soccer a, player guy. There's That's like at five. Chicago. Of them. He's at Chicago. Yeah. yeah. He's at oh. Chicago. Ryan Suckup went to Tampa and killed it. Football. But suck up, suck up, killed it here before too. I'm yeah, saying like all just... these random kickers they signed to try and fill the the void, and then they were terrible here, missing extra points, and I think they go su- elsewhere and nail it. I think mm-hmm. suck up just came back from injury early. Is the problem here? Yeah. And so was, when he was healthy, he was good. Was he forced? Oh, I have no hmm. idea. Interesting. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. Pops in Franklin. What up, pops? Bob's, what's happening? What's up, Merle? How are you, buddy? Hey, we're good. Hey, listen, I've got some inside information on Zeus's arrest. Oh! 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 oh this, this is, is Ramon's dog. Ramon's dog showed up at the house in the back of a cop car one day. We're like, yes. what, what is Zeus doing out here in these streets? Here's what happened. The officer got out and said, is this your dog? He said, yes, it is. He said, Mr. Slate. Your dog has been reported harassing people on a bicycle. Ron Slay looked at him and said, My dog can't ride a bicycle. <laughs> Pops has got jokes, although that was That him. was a Pops joke, I, I, as I, a matter I, of fact. That's so <laughs> a, a, a dad joke. And if you, I know if you had a dog that could ride a bicycle, we, you'd make a lot of money. No, nah, we'd be doing halftime performances at these games. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you that right now. Yeah. That's, yeah. We, he'd, be on, he'd be on the circuit. By the way, shout out to my FedEx delivery guy that I chatted with today. Uh-oh. Who, He's no longer scared? No, this is a different one. Uh. <laughs> who actually it's told me. how often these, these drivers that have to go to your house swap They're like, out. we're not going there yep. anymore. Yep. Who uh, actually told me. I was outside with Little Man, the, the, the little crazy dog. <laughs> Um, Little man. <laughs> yeah, who who actually told me that my dogs are not the craziest on his run. Oh. Yeah. So Cujo is on your street. Oh, I think he was lying to me and just being nice. <laughs> just being but he nice was like, he was like, now that one. <laughs> Talking about Pat. <laughs> yeah, everybody yeah. everybody now that knows one. Patton. <laughs> that everybody one has. Patton. He's a little scary. Six Meanwhile, one. he's behind the door showing his teeth. Uh. <laughs> How's that yeah. go? Uh, I can't wait to see that on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> here, here it comes. There she goes. Oh, oh man. 615-737-1045. So they're, they're reconstructing this roster. And uh, yep. you know, Can I say it's still not a rebuild? Oh, no, no, no. I, I totally mm-hmm. agree with you there. And you usually do. there's about a 30% turnover. I think this one will be more than that. Um. They they got they got to get healthier uh, with these contracts, man, and uh, that's why you have a new GM, honestly. But look at the the moves that they made today. I think Bud Taylor Dupree Lawan is coming hurt. right. Robert Woods eh. was ineffective. Randy Bullock. I mean, you'll get another kicker. That's fine. Save it's money kicker. There. Like you Zach can't Cunningham put a kicker hurt. conversation in the same. Yeah. Zach Cunningham hurt. He he gave you nothing. I mean, it's not personal. It's just. That's what it is. It ain't personal. It's business. I think we all see that now. Um, yes. 615-737-1045. Jonathan in the borough next up on 3HL. Jonathan, what's up? What's up, guys? Hi. How you doing, brother? I'm in the building. I'm in the building. I'm in the building. <laughs> what's up, Jonathan? Hey, love the show. I just wanted to uh, chime in on the cap hits. Um, I think you're looking at some spot track numbers. If you use over the cap instead, It'll show the cap number as if we kept them on the roster. Then it'll show the dead money, and then the difference between those is the savings. Over so the that, cap, what? Get, yeah, the difference is over the yeah, cap. dot com. So cap. it'll be a little more consistent. I think the numbers you were looking at were. Oh, I was know, looking at just dead safe. money, but you're right. It's, yeah, it's it's both. It's one subtracted from the other. You're right. That's why exactly. the numbers are different. <laughs> good call. So, yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys. Good call. The number that we saw uh, was $42.2 million in cash that they saved off the books. Mm. Yes. 
Mm-hmm. So they started the day twenty five million over the cap, basically, and we're rounding up or down or whatever. Um, they've cleared thirty eight million dollars in cap space today, and the cash that they've cleared off the books is forty two point two two one million. Mm. So that's the cash that's off the books for twenty twenty three. See, that's why they have, like, lawyers and stuff, like, manage these caps. Right. And not, like, you know. Us. Me. I major in broadcasting <laughs> because it had one math requirement. One yeah. class. Which I may have had to take multiple times. Hey, nothing wrong with that, you Well, <laughs> I mean. Get the job done. Let's people that say the cap isn't real, it's not true. It's real. You can just finagle it in certain ways true. sometimes. But sure. you got to have a little space to finagle, too. Yeah, so Ryan Tannehill, what, what do you do with Ryan Tannehill? You, Rework him. You, you ain't got no... I'm, You're not interested in Derek Carr. No. no I'm not either. I'm, I'm, I'm far gone. Hey, what, getting you're close gonna... to Daniel Jones' money. I mean, if we're up yeah, close yeah, to 45. Hey, you love Danny, Danny Dimes. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I, you, I, you don't love him 45 other... million, do you? You want in on Danny Dimes? That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money for one year. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of one money. One year of production. Yeah. I, I Can love I Danny say Dimes, this? Though. Who the hell is going to be your quarterback if it's not Ryan Tannehill right now? That's what I'm saying. I mean, you could make a play for, for next Carr, year. But then but you're why? But then you're wrapping. I wouldn't because yeah. then you're wrapping into another veteran yep. for multiple years. And why do that? And if I'm not taking Unless a jump. you think he's your franchise there guy. There you go. If you're not taking a jump, I'm cool. Well, listen, apparently – the Jets think that Derek Carr is like franchise guy. Did you hear what Diana Rossini said? Hung, do you have this? <laughs> They're it, laughing like exactly, I'm laughing. Exactly. A first ballot Hall of Famer. Get out of here with that. Who the hell said Come that? On. Like, how, like, what is he about? J E S T, just, just. You know what that sounds like? That sounds like Derek Carr wasn't really interested in the Jets. And they're trying to sell him on being a. <laughs> this is what we think you are, bro. And we'll say it publicly. You know, and see, I would have told them, you know what? I love everything you're doing. Could you bring me some fried ice cream with that? Because I like, give me, like, like sell it. Let's see. And do you have castles in the sky? Fried ice cream? What a pull. Oceanfront yeah. property? Yeah. On yeah. top of Arizona? a building. No. no, on top of a building. Oceanfront property on top of a building is what I would like. <laughs> Since y'all just making magic happen. First ballot Hall of Fame? That's so stupid, man. Like, that's, Get out you can't even be taking serious. Like, if that that gets out like it got out. Everybody's going to be looking like, see, hey, come on, y'all. you just being the Jets. Like, nobody's going to take you seriously out here in this world. So what do you have to do? You have to rework Tannehill's contract. Without question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to do something with Derrick Henry. Too. I'm not making lateral moves if I'm leaving a person. If I'm leaving a situation, I'm not going lateral. No, you go one more year with Tannehill, and you if you to. still suck, next year's quarterback draft's pretty good. Exactly. And then you get, ho- hopefully, you strike and get – your dude, and then you're under that rookie contract thing that leads mm-hmm. teams to success, where you mm-hmm. can spend money elsewhere. Because yep. you got money spent elsewhere. So Derrick Henry, uh, w- one more year left, um, technically. Uh, 10.5 base, $3 million signing bonus. Um, dead cap number of $9 million, And the cap hit 16.367. That's where I got the seven. Yep. And change, yep. Can I ask y'all something? Sure. With the talks... Uh, from the podcast uh, with AJ Brown when he was talking about um, not going anywhere and verbal promising that man, as long as I'm the coach, I'm gonna be there. Is is anybody any like just a tad bit leery of them not signing Big Jeff? Or is it like 
No. Yeah, that's getting the oh, no. Yeah, they get, okay. All right. Cool. If there was a certain because, general manager still here, I think that'd be a different answer. I think. Uh, no, I disagree. I think it's a different position. I think that we're both of these franchise guys. Yeah, let's let's yeah. talk more about that when we come back. Okay. I know. I'll, yeah, because you weren't here yesterday. We went through all the AJ Brown stuff, and everybody went all over the board. Yeah, on but we didn't hit this. I mean, we didn't. We didn't do. Well, yeah, I you think, didn't go I down think, this. I think path. it was a power struggle. I think Vrabel really thought that he had enough power to to say to AJ Brown, "As long as I'm the coach, you're not going anywhere." And I think he meant it and thought he could roadblock that, and then couldn't. That's what it sounded like to me. So his likes, and so that's why I said when. You know, all that went down that, that J Rob won the war. Or Brable won the war, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah. That was kind of my take on it. But we'll talk more about it when we come back. Six one five seven three seven one oh four five. Also Tennessee with another loss yesterday uh to Texas A and M. They've got to get Joseph Josiah Jordan James and Julian Phillips back. Rick Barnes gave an update about that today. We'll play that bit of audio for you next. Three HL one oh four five the zone. What's happening, good people? Yes, it's time to put your cards on the table and let's earn some money with them. How are you going to do that? Well, we got a situation for you. It's brewing right up there on the border. Where? On the border, Babsy. Uh, exit 2 off Interstate 65 North, 45 minutes from Nashville, 25 minutes from Bowling Green. This is where Triple Barrel Social exists. It is a social club, and if you're someone that loves playing poker, this place is for you. Triple Barrel Social. You want to check it out online? Go to triplebarrelsocial.com, Slay. What do you do there? Oh, what you're going to do there is, first of all, you're going to sign up for a membership because you're going to love everything about it. And a membership includes access to poker games like No Limit Hold'em, Pot Limit Omaha, uh, Omaha! Get a little bit of everything, man. And guess what? All the amenities come with it, including darts, billets, snacks, all kind of stuff. Memberships also range from daily to annual. So you can pick whatever works best for you. And you can always start with daily. Then upgrade to a higher tier. Just head to TripleBarrelSocial.com to learn more about it. Grand opening. Get ready for it. March 3rd. We're going to go check it out. And you should be due you should be there, too. It'll be a $2 to $5 No Limit Hold'em game. Uh, lots of fun. TripleBarrelSocial.com. What do you got to do, Slay? Put your cards on the table. Yes. By the way, uh, I forgot to do this last segment as uh -oh. well. Oh, yes. The 104.5 The Zone ticket window. It's now open, people. Uh, thanks to Window Nation. This is Babs Prize Closet presented by Artisan Custom Closets. And if you want to win two tickets to see Godsmack, at First Bank Amphitheater on May 23rd. Caller number five right now, 615-737-1045. That is Godsmack at the Amphitheater on May 23rd. Good luck to you.
I'm on a boat with my flippy floppies. Uh, so Tennessee in the bottom of the fifth inning has two runners on with two outs. That's not the important part. Alabama A and M has scored one run. Tennessee has 21. 21 to one in the fifth inning. They got a run rule. Yeah, at, you know, at yeah, some point, seven. at some point, the the speech is back in the old days. You know, when they used to use the guillotine. Like at some point, the speech has stopped and the head came off. Jeez, Mayor. <laughs> what the hell is wrong just, with you? It just rolled. The Alabama AM head is off. Just get off the field. <laughs> the Alabama See, AM head is off. They still have two more innings. Yeah. It's, it's, Are they playing seven innings? I don't know. No, they will be because it's, it's a run rule. They're going to call it at, at the cell. I didn't know the run rule rule. Oh, oh, they got out. Oh, there you go. Yeah, job, I, I think it was really safe. But, <laughs> yeah. Like, ah, doesn't know if it's the enough. umps are like, me. Yeah. <clears throat> he's out. We used to tell our, our travel ball kids that. Like, if we had a big lead, like, he's about to call everything. So, mm-hmm. you want to swing at the ball, swing at all of them. Mm-hmm. Which is bad to, you know. It is what teach, it is. Teach that habit. But, anyway. Good if course. you want to hit. Um, so, so, we did the liners. We did the Babs' prize closet. We need Slay the 3HL after party liner. You sure you want me to do this? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, I'm going to read what Laura said about you doing liners today. Listening to Slay read liners, is that what you call them, is good for the soul today. Don and Mayor's reactions are even better. <laughs> All right. I was going to say, it ain't good for the coworkers today. Here we go. Five foot, <laughs> three eights in after party, awaken 180. Awaken 180 weight loss, fast yet sustainable weight loss without medications. And see, I know this because I'm on it. And I, I don't have see this. That's is not get, in the liner. This is where we get in trouble. You no, start interjecting. That's what you're supposed thoughts. to do. That's what no. they always say. Make it your own. Oh gosh, <laughs> not a liner. Okay, fasting or the gym. Reserve your awaken 180 at home consultation today. Puh. Okay. Well, you forgot to say the 3HL after party I is brought first. to you. Oh. Man, let me do this my way. 3HL After Party, y'all. If you stay tuned, it's brought to you by Waking 180 Weight Loss. Fast <laughs> yet sustainable weight loss. And you know why? Because you can look at me right now on Zone TV and see the weight loss taking place. No medications, no fasting, or the gym. I ain't touched the gym. I ain't touched the ball. None of that. Reserve your Waking 180 at home consultation today and tune in to the after party. Killed it. Ah, thank you. Way to go, Rose. <laughs> Is that what you say? I'm right on top of that, Rose. What you think about that, huh? That's not, it doesn't I'm work that way, Mayor. I'm just, <laughs> just glad it's over. <laughs> uh, um, Tennessee loses again. They've dropped five out of seven. Here, here's why. They, so if you go back and look at, um, what do you want to talk about, Babs? Oh, no. A.J. Brown? Oh, we'll get there. Um, <laughs> we're going down the river. Remember, and the raft just kind of goes where All the river right. wants to take it. But we'll get to the finish line. <laughs> okay. We'll get to the end of the Ocoee. I did that once, and I ended up like, with my canoe full of water because we had been dumped so many times. So we just like floated like a C-130. <laughs> just slowly down the road. Yeah, everybody was looking at us like, why? how are they going so slow? Well, we had like 300 pounds of water in our canoe. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Um, eventually you go down when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's we, not good. We were lucky. Tennessee was not. Here, Here's the thing. Like they out-rebounded A&M. They had 19 assists on 22 made baskets. Like they did what they do. They made, they attempted 14 free throws. Texas A&M made 28 free throws. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That's what they do, lead the country in free throw attempts. Some people think that Rick Barnes doesn't get after the officials enough. And that they can be swayed by the opposing coach who's over there losing his mind, like Buzz Williams last night several different times. I do kind of believe that. In a lot of situations, but that's him. That's who he is. I just he does her once in a while, but not like not like Cal- Calipari. Oh, they gonna ride him, or Bruce will ride him too. Yep. I just think, man, it, until this team is whole, you can for, uh, we not forget about it. But it's gonna be ugly. South Carolina, is, they ought to win that without people being involved. But there's just no, just no way. They they need a team to be whole. I'm gonna keep on saying it. Well, Rick Barnes uh, giving an update on Joe, Joe, James, and Julian Phillips. Mm-hmm. 
Am I reading too much into him saying I have to believe it instead of I know that they're working hard, as hard as they can? No, nah, that's just him talking. Uh, okay. cause, because, you know, like one thing about it, Big G and Chad, like I've been a part of Chad. And yeah, he Chad ain't going to put you out there unless – you gonna yeah, Chad Newman, the trainer up there. He's not gonna put you out there unless you're ready to roll and you can help the team. He's not gonna let you go out there and hurt the team. And I think they learned that with Julian Phillips going out there in the game and playing ten minutes and couldn't play the second half. So Rick yeah. Barnes also talking about the shot clock. Shot clock violations are on everyone, not just a guy Ziggler. That's what we talked about. We talked about that yesterday. People passing up on the day before and the week before, passing up shots to try to get a better shot when you already got a good shot. Take the good shot. You may not get the great shot, and that's what's happening. So, guys that can shoot, shoot. Is it this really? Shoot this or is simple. shoot. That's it. That's it. Simple. Zakai like was shooting. Yeah. Yeah. Because ain't nobody else going to shoot. And then you know Kamala, what I'm Kamala tried to tie the game with a three, <laughs> yeah. like a dribble up three. Yeah, Boy, that shot almost went in too, man. It did. Twice. It did. Bounced it. Hung on the rim. Hmm. There's the Wednesday edition of 3HL. The I'm after Dave. party is coming up next. Brought to you by Wake 180. Thank you, Slay. You're welcome. Babsy wants to talk about AJ Brown. Too late. You guys, you remember how you, earlier y'all talked about the plane with the worst turbulence? Yeah. This show. Right now, <laughs> oh, this, I, I, got there. I thought it was smooth. This yeah, was man. smooth operating. I was up Listen, all in the. Um, some shows are hey, a C one thirty. It's been worse. Yeah, I, I thought just, this was great. <laughs> motion sickness. Some shows are a C one thirty, and they just plot along. And you know, we got a bunch of shows on this station. They're out there doing tricks. That's right. Saying, "Watch this." All right, Bab. Mm-hmm. I don't get it. <laughs> We're all over the place, tricks. yeah, and fast. <laughs> <laughs> Very fast. Uh, back at it tomorrow. See, Love this y'all. is why I don't stop talking when Hunk's like, go to break, go to break, because then we never come back and talk about what I want to talk about. I agree well, with we you. We just ran out of time, but we had to get Tennessee basketball in there. It's only right. And we talked about AJ all day yesterday. I just brought a good point up to Babs. I'm going to write it down, Babs. Yeah, write it down. What was it? Write it down. <laughs> take a picture. I don't give up. You said what? I'll write it down. What was it? What was it, though? <laughs> all right. Good night, God. Seriously. Us. We'll figure it out. <laughs> See ya!